Your grandpa's here. Ah, hell. He, he's dressed like a Dickensian pervert. Okay, well, thanks for warning me. <sighs> Hello, my beautiful daughter. Oh, God. You gonna read me a book, Grandpa? I sure am. Ah, shit. Hey, kid. Sick, huh? I brought my favorite book. Sorcery. You look like a Dickensian pervert. Hey, mind your manners. Mom! And don't cough on me or you'll make your mima a widow. Fine. I wasn't even For supposed the... to be here today. <laughs> I'm right. going home. See Chairs ya. on the way. Ah. Grandma won't mind being a widow for the third time. <laughs> ah, all right. Okay. Ugh. I guess I don't I need you this. You can't really see my hat, can you? Nah. It does look like a dick. I do look like a Dickensian pervert. It's a look. <laughs> it's a living. Mm. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Dice Friends. I'm Adam. I'm Beach. This is Beach, and we have Paul on tech. Uh, hello. Yeah. In case you didn't understand, it's supposed to be the Princess Bride. Is this a kissing book? Oh, uh, <laughs> no, 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 absolutely not. All right. Hell yeah. yeah. I mean, it depends on what happens, I guess. Yeah. I guess that's fair, yeah. It depends. All right, so I'm here to read Beach a bedtime story, and I'm hoping Beach falls asleep. Mm -hmm. I've been up since five, so uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, hello everybody, if this is your first time here, uh, we are doing a Choose Your Own Adventure book. It is the Sorcery series, uh, it's, it's, well, the Sorcery series, and it's the first book. It's the Shuman, Shum, Sha, mm -hmm. <laughs> Sha, <laughs> Shamutanti Hills. Yes! Uh, Shamu, Shamutanti, Sha, I feel like you might need to say that word a few times over the course of the... Stream, so. Shamutanti. Sham Shamutanti. Shamutante. I'm <laughs> Donde Asta <laughs> El Baño. <laughs> uh, so we are reading through a Choose Your Own Adventure book, but you know, before we start, mm. we have to create our character. And our character's name, as always, Otaku Jeff. Great. Otaku Jeffrey, back, back at it. Donde Asta. La Biblioteca. Okay. You are making this happen thanks to patreon.com slash loading ready run. There we go. Thanks, Grant. There it is. Yeah, there we go. Bees is sick in bed and he managed to get the All right, Paul, let's let's pump the brakes. Okay? You can leave me alone. I've got glasses. Yeah, let's let's not let's not bully Adam tonight. Hey yeah! Wait a second. Maybe for once in your lives. That's right. Everybody. Now I can go, what? No. <laughs> That's right, everybody. No no Adam bullying tonight. Let the book do that. Yeah, right? let the book do that. It is currently uh, 5 12 p.m. Let's see how long that lasts for. <laughs> Whoa. All right. The glasses are going to stay on because it it's fun. Mm -hmm. All right. And they're not prescriptions. No, they're optically clear. They're optically clear. Mm hmm. All right, so before we start, we need to make our character. Uh, the way that these games work is they work all exactly like they did for all the other fight fighting fantasy games. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, so we have three stats. We have skill, stamina, and luck. Skill is entirely combat-based. Okay. Um, stamina is your health, and then luck is something that you can roll if you miss, like in an attack, or if you take damage, you can roll for your luck, and then you try to roll 2d6 under your luck score, and if you do, then uh, you either take reduced damage or do more damage, depending on what you try to do. And also okay. in times of the book, they will ask you to test your luck. Ah. Every time, but every time you test your luck, no matter in which way you do it, you have to lower your luck score by one. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. So you better like load up on luck is what you're saying. Well, I mean, I have to roll for it. Nah, so, okay, you know. fair enough. So there are two character choices. There's a warrior <laughs> and there's a wizard. Yeah, okay. There's a wizard and there's a spell book, okay? The wizard has uh, less of a combat score, so when you're in combat, uh, normally when you, you roll 2d6 and add 6 if you're the warrior, mm -hmm. but the wizard only gets 2d6 plus 4. But the wizard gets a host of spells. Ah, okay. And we're going to try something different with this Twitch chat. Loyal viewers who are here, sorry YouTube, but 
uh, there are times in the book where we have to choose a spell, but the way they, they word it is that you get to look at the spell book, but you can't write anything down, you have to memorize it. Like at the beginning of the... Yeah. Because they, you know what their, you know what their logic is. They're like, well, a wizard wouldn't have time to pull out their book and cast the spells in real life. And I'm like, and and also like your spell book is too valuable to just like just take around? to take. Yeah, uh, somebody might steal it or whatever. Yeah, yeah like fair my enough. Brother in Christ. So, <laughs> owl bears aren't real. <laughs> I do kind of love this idea of like trying to emulate the idea of like memorizing spells by making it so it's like you can look at the spells before the you start the adventure, but like once you've started it, you are not allowed to look at the spells. Like, I mean, yeah. you should be able to do it after like an eight hour long rest, right? Like you should be, you're, you're wow, crafting I components, mean, right? Like This isn't D&D. &D. Yeah. This isn't D &D. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's sorcery. the inspiration. Can you, you know? respect the source material, please, for yes. once in your life? I'm, I'm gonna even keep my pants on. <laughs> Wow, that's way more than I expected. Mm -hmm. That's in, wild. In a sign of respect? Yeah, that... Out of respect, I will, yeah. l the pants will stay on. So what we're going to do is when we come across, there's a there's different parts in the Choose Your Adventure book where we get five choices of spells, but they only give us a three-letter like code name. Mm. Some of them are obvious, and then some are not. Okay. But what we're going to do is we're going to put a poll in Twitch chat with all the spell names, and then you all get to vote oh, on which no. one that we do. Mm. I'm letting you know right now, if we die tonight, mm -hmm. I'm rewinding. Okay. Great. Because this this is just leading. This is going to lead us to a lot of deaths. Mm -hmm. Okay. I trust you, Twitch chat. Kind of as much as I can trust any gestalt entity yeah. of people <laughs> that can cast votes willy nilly. Yes. Yeah. So the responsibility is in your hand. We're going to see how long it takes. Right. If it ta if it starts gumming up the works, then right. I'm just gonna move on and we're gonna pick something. Fair enough. But or I'll just look at Twitch chat and I'll take the first suggestion. And, right. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. we we it's possible we'll go from doing a poll to just like spam Twitch chat. Yes. But <laughs> the poll, hopefully, the poll will work. Hopefully, the yeah. poll works. Okay. Because I really want and, some agency for our Twitch chatters. Right. Yeah. And uh, you know, you're not supposed to look at the the spell descriptions while you're playing the book. Yes. Uh, Obviously, we can't tell whether you at home are looking at the spell descriptions when you're making the suggestions. Mm -hmm. so, but, you know, maybe you look at them. You can probably find a list of the spells somewhere online. I request me to you, Twitch chat. Mm -hmm. Don't look it up. Okay? Yeah. Just, let's, let's just... Play this together. Yeah, let's play this together. Okay? I know it's going to be hard, but let's just play along. And we'll all have a lot of fun tonight, okay? Yeah. That's not metagame. And I get to lay here, not yes. because I'm not because I'm like um, I'm like infirm or anything. It's not <laughs> like my leg is broken or anything. But I get to lay here all night and maybe fall asleep. Yeah. Mm. I hope you do. I really do. <laughs> all right. Uh, is there anything else? Oh, there's a couple other things. Um, at one point in the story, so we have a god. <laughs> Great. Yeah, a okay. goddess. Oh, okay. Uh, Libra, the goddess of justice. Mm -hmm. During your adventure, you will be watched, or you will be watched over by your own goddess, Libra. Um, and I'll be like, who's Steve Jobs? <laughs> <laughs> man, I got an audience of one tonight. This is great. Oh my <laughs> man. I, I like you know when it, when it was like, hey, let's do this. Uh, let, let's you know do this fighting fantasy book. Uh, yeah. Bij. You're gonna have to be lying in bed the whole time. What really? And uh, that wasn't a that wasn't like a tough convincer. I don't think. No, I was like, I can do this. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, if the going gets tough, you may call on her for aid, but she will only help you once each adventure. Okay. Once you have called her for help in the Shamutanti Hills, nail it. Mm -hmm. She will not listen to you again until you reach Kare. Is that that's the next? I don't yeah. know. Sure, yeah. yeah. yeah Kare, you're right. Kare City Port of Traps is the second book. Okay. City Port of Traps. <laughs> yeah. What a weird thing to be known for. Yeah, you just rattled that one off. Yeah. Uh, actually, it's the City Port of Traps. Adam. Look, the 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 sorcery, like in the in the canon of fighting fantasy books, yeah. mm -hmm. the sorcery exclamation sorcery. Yeah. It's like a musical. You put an exclamation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the sorcery books are are considered to be you know the top tier. They're for one thing, they're one of the only ones that are like a big series. Yeah. Ah, okay. uh, this is like an actual story. Yeah, yeah. 
So there's four books in the series. Um, you know, we'll see how that... It'll probably... Assuming we continue on, it'll take us a while because, you know, we only do these streams every once in a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so she can do three things. She can revitalize us, which is restore all of our, our skill, stamina, and luck to their original values. Good. That's very good. Um, escape. Occasionally when you're in danger, the text will offer you the option of calling on Libra to help you. Or removal of curses and diseases. She will remove any cur curses or diseases you pick up on your venture. Uh, this is not given as an option in the text. You may do this when you wish and only once each adventure. Wow. The same okay. with the healing. The healing isn't an option in the text. I just say like, Libra. Yeah, heal me. Libra D's. <laughs> it's... <laughs> so, I mean, this... This book actually has a god keeping track of whether there is any justice in the world. Yes. Ah, uh, yeah. Also, a reason why we're going to die a lot is because spells cost stamina. Yeah. So that's why I figure we're going to die a lot. Every time we cast a spell, it costs us precious life points. Okay? So we need to roll, roll high on our life. Uh, we start our adventure with a sword and a backpack. Uh, any clothing? Nope, sword and a backpack. Great, okay. <laughs> uh, you have a pouch around your waist containing 20 gold. Mm -hmm. You've got, you got a pouch. That's... you got a pouch. All right, and strategically placed. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> oh, man, tonight's going to be great. Uh, we've got 20 gold, and then we have enough provisions, food and drinks, sufficient for two meals only. Oh, so we need to find you, food. You are not well prepared for, no. this, for yeah. this adventure. In the other books, they were like, yeah, you got like two weeks of food on Yeah, you. you've got like ten meals or something. Yeah. yeah. But wow. you don't think about how heavy two weeks of food would be. Yeah. Like, are you going to carry around two weeks worth of bread? No. 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 You know, how I many mean, loaves well, be is that? big, right? Yeah. Like, you, you know. It's olden time, so everything's like in that one part in Mario World where everything's bigger. Right, yeah. That's how it worked. Back yeah, in everything, was just, just, everything was just like giant, giant novelty-sized yeah. loaves of bread and disease. Uh, yeah, and they're going to go bad too, right? Yeah. You're going to be walking outside. Viruses were so big that you could just see them. Yeah. yeah. You'd fight them with swords. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, blah, blah, blah. Three-letter words. Yeah, we know about magic. I think that's it. All right, let's roll our stats. Okay. So... Uh, oh yeah, we've got the uh, top-down view here. Oh, by the way, uh, the so I've got the the PDF of the book here. Um, yeah. Although my version is an older version, which has the far superior picture of the Manticore on the cover. Oh, that's what that is. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's oh, a, yeah, the that's, Yeah, that's way better. That's the Manticore that like didn't want to come in today. <laughs> it's just that? like oh. oh. They call it a Manticore because it has a face of an upset man. Man, man, to gore. I, I, I distinctly, I had this book when I was a kid. I don't think I ever actually played through it like properly. Oh, uh, okay. But I distinctly remember the like sad-looking manticore on the cover. Just Paul read it in order, cover to cover. He's just like, I'll just keep reading until I get to a part that says the end. It looks like that manticore was just told that they're out of peppercorn sauce at Chili's. <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole reason I came in. <laughs> My wedges. Yeah. All right, honey. God, we're, we're going we'll go somewhere else. Going so Let's go to somewhere respectable like Montana's Let's where they let us draw on the table. Go to the other Chili's. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to the mall, Chili's. Yeah. We're going to the Chili's at the airport. <laughs> All right. We should get going, man. It's been 20 minutes and we're just messing around. Okay. So we have to determine our stats. Um... We have to, for our skill, we got to roll one die, and then, oh, I said this wrong, not the attack that gets plus six or plus four, it's when you roll for your skill. Oh, so okay. if we were playing the warrior, we would roll a d6 plus six, okay. and that would be our skill. We're the wizard, so we're rolling a d6 plus four. Oh, okay, well. Well, yeah. we're never fighting anything. So. Yeah, that's, that's right, yeah. Charisma oh, game. Two. So we have a six skill. Okay. Sick. Dabs, unironically. <laughs> All right, this is the big one. We need a 12. Uh, roll both dice, add 12 to the number rolled, and enter this total in the stamina box. All right, so we need the big one. Yeah, we need a big sixer, okay? If okay. I roll double one, I'm getting up, and I'm leaving, and I'm not coming back. All right, show me two sixes. 
I didn't roll double one. That's good. Oh, right. Want to right. just do a re-roll on that one? No, 15. Look, Paul, the stamina number is irrelevant because we're not dying. No. Right? No, we're going to starve to death, but we're not going to yeah. die. So really... I mean, but you use magic. Stamina uses magic. Looks like a 12 to me. Well, not Greg, thanks. 24 <laughs> stamina. Wow, that's unreal. <laughs> I can't believe that. It does say one, too. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. What yeah. part of the world are you from where that... I mean, it does look like a 12, right? Yeah. I guess. Yeah. That's a good point, right? We rolled mm -hmm. a 12? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Sick. <laughs> Can't argue with that. Yeah, you can't argue with that logic. Actually, 21 sounds even better. Yeah. <laughs> we rolled a 21, Steve Jackson. Yeah. How? What are you doing now? <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, luck. D6 plus 6. This is... We need a 6. Yeah, I, I agree. Show me potato salad. Hey! Uh, old Get man there. still got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Some of the cold shots on the... Uh, on the Dice Throne stream last night were pretty impressive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, Wheeler was going large with sixes, and we're like, how are you doing this? He's like, okay, and we're going to throw another six again. Boom. Like, what are you of course, doing? Of course, it helps if you just always call it as a six, and you, you know, forget about the times you missed. Exactly. All right. Uh, we need to remember this. If we're fighting something, we always do baseline two points of damage mm -hmm. if we hit, and then they do two points of damage. Um, we Every hit we make, we can test your luck um, to do additional damage, and we can also test our luck to take less damage. Um, when we test our luck and our su uh, we're successful, there we go, that's right. what we're yeah, my yeah. brain. Mm -hmm. When we're successful, we do an extra f uh, two points of damage. But if we test our luck and fail, we, um, <laughs> we restore one point of stamina to the creature. So somehow oh we manage to... No, well, well it's, you, do, you do one point of damage instead of two. Oh, yeah. You, so it's like... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Never mind, yeah. Yeah, it's like two to you or you one. take two damage. And then if you test your luck, you do four damage or one damage. Mm. Or you take three or one. Yeah. And then when we're on the defense, we can test our luck and either take half damage, so one. Okay. Or, but if we're unlucky, we take three. Oh. It just adds an extra point. Okay, okay. And I think that's pretty much it, really. We're all caught up. We have two two meals. We've got 12 luck, 24 stamina, which is unbelievable. Yeah. And I believe you can only use one of the meals when it says so in the text. So if it says, like, you can eat now, yeah. you can eat. Ah. All right. You can't just gobble whenever yeah, you Yeah, don't want. I look like a himbo Cameron? <laughs> His glasses yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he, if he, if he ever, if he ever grew out the beard, right? I don't yeah. think he's ever going to do I that. Don't think Cameron no. ever grow out his beard, but. All right, everybody, are we ready? I'm ready. Yeah. <clears throat> <Ooh>. Okay. <clears throat> Give me a long name. The Legend of the Crown of Kings. Centuries ago, in the time we ca now call the Dark Ages, whole regions of the world were undiscovered. There were pockets of civilization, each with their own races and cultures. One such region was Kakabad. <laughs> Kakabad. Yeah, that's literally how it's spelled. Look, Kakabad. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. The case, okay. Kakabad. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, we've got the map here. Oh. What I like about this is the thing I was looking at has, so this is the map from the, this is the original map. Uh, and then the next map got a little better. Yeah. It's ah. the same, of the same place. And, and then in one of the editions, they did a map like this. Wow. Oh. Super fancy. Same place again, but. Yeah, it turns out Kaka, not all that bad. <laughs> a dark land at the end of the earth. All right. Although several warlords had tried, Kakabad had never been ruled. All manner of evil creatures forced from the more civilized lands beyond the Zenzumu peaks had gradually crawled into Kakabat, which became known as the Vermin Pit at Earth End. <laughs> Just the whole country. Oh my god. Man, what is these what are these ad libs names? Hey Steve Jackson! Mm. You need a proper noun and an adjective. Mm-hmm. Okay. Vermin pit? Vermin pit. Civilization and order had spread throughout the rest of the known world ever since the discovery of the Crown of Kings by Chalana the Reformer of Fenfrey. With its help, 
Chalana became emperor of the largest empire in the Eastern world. This magical crown had mysterious powers, bestowing supernormal qualities of leadership and justice to its owner. But Chalana's own ambitions were not of conquest. He wished instead to establish peaceful nation states aligned to Fenfrey. Thus, in his wisdom, he passed the fabled crown from ruler to ruler in the neighboring kingdoms, and with the help of its magical powers, one, of, one by one, these lands became peaceful and prosperous. Wow, it actually worked out. Yeah. Yeah, magical crown to make you king almost never is good. Yeah, yeah. It's never, you never pass that around. Right? Yeah, you just... It, I'm like, hey, Chalana. Yeah. Why are you bogarting the crown? Give it's it like, to me. I want to turn, yeah. <laughs> it's like, this crown will make you the ultimate king. <laughs> How so? It'll make you actually, like, be, be just and fair to everybody. Oh. Well, that's not that, fun. That's, yeah, actually, that's not fun at all. That's actually really good. Yeah. That's not why I want to be in power. Oh. <laughs> the path was set. Each ruler would own the crown of kings for a four-year period in which to establish order within his kingdom and huh. fall in with the growing Fenfrey alliance. So far, the kingdoms of Ruddlestone, Lendelland, Galantria, or Galantaria, sorry, and Bryce. <laughs> Bryce! <laughs> Guy's like, I need to name my kingdom. Let's name it after me. Okay, you want to call it like... Uh... Brysonia? Bryceland? <laughs> it's just Bryce. Bryce. Name it after me. My name's Bryce. Jesus, why did we pick King Bryce? What's it short for? Brown Bry Rice! <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Bryce had taken their turns under the rule of the crown. The benefits were immediate. War and strife were virtually unknown. Mm. The king of Annaland duly received the crown of kings amid great ceremony and... From that day onwards, the development of Annalan was ensured. No one quite knew how the Crown of Kings would have such an enormous uplifting effect on a whole nation. Some said it was divinely inspired. Some that its power was merely a, in, the, in the mind. But one thing was certain. Its effects were unquestionable. Mm -hmm. All was well in Annalan until the night of the Black Moon. Wow, just like the fact that just passing it around worked for so long, like... You know, okay, it's been four years, now give up the crown. I find it a little uh, hard to believe that no. you have that kind of peaceful transition yeah, of power. Yeah. yeah. After so four like, years, that's that seems like a strange amount of time. Yeah. So there's like there's like four five, I guess five countries, they're all passing the crown around, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what happens to the other countries in the like sixteen year interim? That they don't have just the crown. Fall to shit, yeah, do I they guess. just like? Does everything just fall apart? I think maybe. Yeah, like how? Just goes I like, guess the, uh, the idea is the crown like sets you, you. Once you have the crown, you can like set things up so it'll work good. Ah, uh, you you're very good at being like ah. Time to make a judiciary. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> but yeah, you gotta. I think you, you, you gotta get the crown back every once in a while to like. Top up your brain. Yeah, top up everything. <laughs> yeah. Top up your. Did you say top up your brain? Yeah, top up your brain. Yeah. You put it back oh, on. You're like, brain. oh, I'm smart again. I thought you said top up your brand. No. <laughs> well, yeah, you know my brand. What's yeah. your brand? I don't know. Supreme. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell because I'm wearing the crown. Uh, the king was the first to discover that the crown was missing, carried off on that starless night by Birdman. <laughs> By Birdman from Zaman. All right. The crown was on its way to Mempeng in the outlaw territories of Kakabad. News came from the Bucklands that the crown was being carried to the Archmage of Mempeng, whose ambitions were to make Kakabad his kingdom. Great. There's some names. <laughs> yeah. Although Kakabad was a dangerous land, it was in itself little threat to the surrounding kingdoms. The lack of rule meant it had no army and its own internal struggles kept. Or its own struggles, internals, its own its own internal struggles kept it permanently preoccupied. Uh. But with the crown of kings to establish rule, Kakabad could potentially be a deadly enemy to all members of the Fenfrey Alliance. Such was the shame that fell on Analand for the loss of the crown that all benefits from that all benefits from two years under its rule soon disappeared. I have a question. Yeah, what's up? So, are all of these kingdoms not? They're not in Kakabad. They're all no, outside. They're next okay, yeah, I see. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Kakabad is like Kakabad. I, yeah, I love this idea. Like, but presumably the guys who stole the crown are like they still steal the crown. They're like, haha, now this will be. 
you know what? Yeah. I think we need to be better to all our yeah. other people. Crown takes over your brain, so yeah. it's gonna like like, oh, like you like steal it. And it's mushrooms. like I'm gonna be the king of everyone and take over the world. I'll no. be a despot. No, I don't think I will. I I think I'll establish a, rule of law. Yeah, rule a, a well thought out uh, thing that makes everybody happy. Yeah, I like to picture since it was stolen by Birdman. Obviously, the new king is a bird man or yeah. bird woman, bird person. Yeah, you know? yeah. In bird person culture, it's, that is an insult. I, I do. I do like that the the bird people are from Bachland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's not B A W K. Yeah. Bach, 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 Bach. Boss weapons. Uh, all right. Such was the shame. Yeah, it fell on them. Blah blah. Law, order, and morale were breaking down. The king was losing the confidence of his subjects. Neighboring territories were looking suspiciously across their borders. There were even whisperings of invasions. One hope remained. Someone. For a military force would never survive the journey, must travel to Mampang and rescue the crown of kings. <laughs> Only on its safe return would the dreadful curse be lifted from Analand. You have volunteered yourself for this quest, and your mission is clear. You must cross Kakabad to Mampang Fortress and find the crown. I... When, when did the curse come in? Just because they stole the crown, it's like, and now there's a curse. It's well, they can't like, make any decisions with a crown. I guess. Right? I think yeah. the curse is normal. Uh, like okay. the idea is that like once you've once you've had the advantage of the crown, not having the crown is like, oh crap, this is this is terrible. I gotta do this. How, on do, my how own. do people live like this? Yeah. I would imagine I've never used one, but I would imagine it's much like getting a bidet and then having to go back to a normal toilet. It sure is. <laughs> it's like your life is irrevocably changed, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So so we can see here down in the bottom left hand corner, there's Analand. So that's where you start. Yeah. Right. And there's the Shamantanti Hills. Wow, I like how it, the actual fortress is literally on the map. Like, yeah, oh. way up at the top there, and, and so, the so we're, peaks. we're going. I guess we're going to be going in a general uh, upward, right? You know, north easterly direction. Just a straight line, yeah, as the crow flies. So there's Kare. Oh, I guess we're going there first, actually. Yeah. And then we'll go through the Badubak Plains, presumably, yeah. and into the forest. And I thought that's the forest of Santa. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! Uh, Santa Forest. Santa Forest. Santa Claus. Santa Claus. I can't wait to show up at Manpain Forest and be like, "Oh, Elden Ring." <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I feel feral tonight. Yeah. 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 I'm. I'm feeling it's good. It. This was all your idea. Like, I know. Yeah. I feel like I got into the Skittles. <laughs> I'm all jacked up on sugar. I'm like. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Just, oh. Yeah. I'm trying to keep up. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, you ready? I am, please. All right. You awake at sunrise. After dressing, you breakfast on bread and goat's milk and collect your belongings. Outside, the outpost... Sorry, do you have this guy? Do you have this picture? What yes. the hell? Okay. Mine's a little different. Here, Beach, I'll show you. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, lots of grayscale. There's I... a quote here, too. I, I wish you safe on your journey. For the way ahead will not be safe. Okay. Outside, the outpost settlement is stirring. The women folk emerge to wash and prepare their meals as the day's guard takes over. Eyes follow you as you leave your hut and walk towards the Shamatanti Wall. The Frontiers people are well aware of your mission, and a small crowd of well-wishers follow some distance behind you. It's just like Willow. <laughs> Before you stands the Cantopani Gate, guarded constantly by Sightmaster warriors, Chosen for their powers of telescopic vision. Great. Ooh. <laughs> is, that, is, that, this is, that, is that these guys? Yeah. Yeah. Their powers of telescopic vision. The gate is the final doorway between Analand and Kakabad. Once more, you check your pack. Satisfied that your preparations are complete, you and <laughs> you nod to the Sightmaster Sergeant. For the first time for the last time, he glances at the lookout atop the gate. Who signals the all clear? You got both your meals. Yeah, yeah. I, I like you look at the map and you're like, yeah, it's about two days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do, you do this thing, you're like, yeah. one, two, yeah, two, yeah. Days, two days, two days. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like six inches. How far could it be? Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a doorway opens up in front of you, and you get your first view of the Shamatanti foothills, the first stage of your journey. 
The sight master sergeant strides over and grasps your hand. I wish you not. I will not wish you a safe journey, for the way ahead will not be safe. Kakabad is a treacherous land inhabited by devils. But this you already know. Mm -hmm. I know this Still voice too. Still got it, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Still got it. Take the path ahead to Kantupani. A small settlement of traitors. Although most are rogues and thieves, which you should reach within the hour. From Kantapani onwards, there are three routes through Biratanti to Care, a city port on the Jabaji River. <laughs> From Care, you must cross the backlands, which are unknown. It is said that day and night in the backlands are controlled not by the sun, but by supernatural forces. And bear in mind also that from care onwards, your progress will be watched. Wow. His warnings do little to inspire confidence in you. He continues, but I have observed your training and you are indeed a worthy champion. I wish you luck and success on your quest. My thoughts and the good wishes of all the people of Analand will be with you. With Libra on your side, may you live to lift the curse and, de uh, and depression which rack our kingdom. You shake his hand, thank him for his good wishes, and step up to the gate. Resolutely, you pass through the doorway. The faces of the folk watching your departure reveal the hopes that rest on you and with the success of your quest. With the wave, you turn and face the hills. The early morning air is crisp, and the rising sun paints the hills in colors of natural beauty which conceal the devilry ahead. <laughs> Setting off determinedly, you follow the path. Your quest has begun. Turn to 178. Wow, that's a lot of pages. I have voices if you have bits. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 178, you die. Oh, that would be just roll credits, baby. Why did you turn to this page? Yeah, you dummy. Yeah. 178, huh? Did you not catch the secret thing he was telling you to turn to a different page? <laughs> No, I didn't. He's like, I have things to tell you. One, <laughs> and then eight. <laughs> oh, page eight, page eight. Uh, the path winds through fields of wild scrubland. The countryside is deserted and an eerie silence is broken only by the caw cawing of an occasional crow. The birds appear to pause in the air to examine you as they pass and you feel uneasy in their presence. You pass over a small hillock from the top uh, from the top of which you can see the path continuing downwards into a small settlement of huts at the base of the Shamatanti Hills. You follow the path and, as you approach the village, noises and movements indicate that it is populated. As the path runs straight through the village, you have little choice but to follow it. The rounded huts are made of a uh, hard-barked bright clay with thatched roofs. As you pass, eyes appear at dark doorways watching your movements. Suddenly, a villager appears from one of the dwellings and stands before you. He is five feet tall, with thick-set arms, and thighs half-clothed in tattered breeches. His eyes are wild, and his long red hair and beard stand out on his face in a wiry tangle. Out, stranger! He commands. What the business do you have in Kantopani? What is your response? Tell him you are a traitor. Ask for directions onwards. Tell him you are hungry and need provisions. Remember that. Yeah, we can just get more meals. You want to you want to try to ask for more food? I mean, you miss one hundred percent of the shots you don't take. It's right? true, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, let's go one ninety eight. All right. I would like more food, please. He motions on ahead, telling you that you will find the village in shortly on the right. By choosing this option, you will now discover one of the rules of the game. <laughs> wow, this is a real fourth wall breaking uh, yeah, paragraph. Yeah, that's kind of a weird. <laughs> Uh, you discover one of the rules of the game, which will you will otherwise only discover by trial and error. The adventure is divided into days, and each day you will need to eat one meal. Otherwise, you will lose stamina points due to undernourishment. Options will be given either to eat provisions from your pack or to buy food at local inns during the day. Hmm. If you go for a day without food, you will suffer. When night comes, you will be given the option to sleep or continue through the night. Likewise, if you miss a night's sleep, you will also lose stamina points as you will be tired the next day. Mm. Although taking a night's rest will usually replenish your stamina. Usually. Usually, old man. But you will have to choose your times to eat and sleep carefully as sometimes a seemingly safe place to rest and eat may hold forbidden dangers. You walk on ahead as the villager indicated. Turn to 257. So, 
So I think this is a dumb mechanic, and I think food is dumb. Yes. Well, I love food, but I think food and video, like any kind of like hunger mechanic, never well done. Mm. It's not fun. It doesn't introduce any weird or interesting decisions. It's just like, I just need food because I don't want to die. Right. Yeah. So we'll probably largely ignore it's, it. Hunger is basically uh, weapon degradation for your body. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. is. Wow. Breath of the Wild sucks. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming after Papa Nintendo, Beach. What are you going to do, huh? You're just a sick child in a bed. I'm going to have a nap. <laughs> I'll show you. <laughs> I don't have to listen to this shit. 57. Uh, 257. Also, Crondor has a great food mechanic, I think, so. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. You you just all you do is you carry rations around in your pack, yeah. And then every day that you're on the road, you'll just use them. Yeah. But then of course, if you don't have any rations in your pack, you will uh, you will take like a little bit of damage every day until you find more food again. Um, but also, you can find poisoned rations and spoiled rations, and you can eat those if mm -hmm. you're hungry, and then just end up poisoned or like sick. Yeah, oh, sick. So it's like that's kind of neat that they work that into the game. Just like real life. Yeah. The inn offers hot meals for sale, and if you wish to stop and eat, the charge will be one gold piece. Bread and goat's cheese are also available if you wish to buy food to take with you, and the price for two meals worth is two gold pieces. If you wish to sit down and eat, turn to 116. If you wish to buy provisions, do so and pay the two gold pieces. Or, if you wish to continue with it with or without new provisions, turn to 131. Can we do both? So, you can't go above your starting stamina. No. So, like, sitting down to eat might not be that relevant right now well i mean we have to eat every day that's true i mean yeah and we, but we, i don't think you have what today. you have what 20 gold yeah i'm so, loaded yeah getting some more provisions at this point actually might be good. inflation seems nuts one gold piece for a meal yeah seems like a lot don't they it? cut that shit up into pieces of eight or whatever <laughs> yeah i mean traditionally yeah yeah right there's it's it's, it's gotten bad Food's very expensive. That's wild. The food well, is expensive. Actually, well, what? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> they... That's an easy laugh. Every get used to that one. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I keep forgetting that's coming. Like, yes. it's it's one of those things where they they know that you're like a traveler type. You know, it's like oh right. The meal is actually like one silver piece, but they're like charge this guy a gold. Piece. <laughs> yeah. What's he gonna do? Not eat? Mm hmm. <laughs> He could move here and then pay less money, I guess. Yeah. All right, let's. Uh, I'll just buy some provisions and then we'll. Actually, I'll sit. I want to do both, so I'm gonna buy some food. Go down to 18. Okay. And then I'm gonna go to 116. So I got to pay another gold piece. I'm assuming. Yeah. Go to 17. We're gonna go to 116. So we're up to four. Yeah. Four provisions. Now, I think we can go above our starting stamina, can we? Because here it says, the meal is warm and nourishing. Add two stamina points. Don't mm -hmm. forget to pay the price of the meal. You know what? I'm just going to, you know what? Yeah, I'm, do I'm it. Just, yeah. I don't even care at this point. Yeah. Really. And run it back, too. Yeah. Like, let's let's just stuff ourselves. Uh, actually, rules is written, <laughs> says adds two t stamina points. Yeah. yeah. Also, like, this is the first thing that happens in the game. So it'd be kind of, I mean, I wouldn't put it past this kind of a game to do it, to, like, mess with you. Where yeah. It's like, Haha, <laughs> there's no point to that. Yeah. You spent money for no good reason. Start uh, over. Wow, nothing bad happened. I'm surprised. That we, I thought we would get mugged. Yeah. Or like cursed. The or we eat the roast beef and get poisoned and die. Yeah. 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 Well, Just I mean, yeah, there's, there's like this villager guy is like, why are you here, outsider? <laughs> yeah. uh, can I get some food? I've been yes, walking. the inn is that way. It's like, I've been walking 20 minutes. Like, <laughs> like you can see where I, you I watched me leave. Uh, this I speak. This character speaks highly to me because I literally work for twenty minutes. I'm like, wow, I'm famished. Can we get some eat around here or what? Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's like you've been here twenty minutes. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm starving. Yeah. Yeah. And you're you were literally the the best person for oh, this. Oh yeah, we were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There wasn't there wasn't like a huge uh, amount of people who are volunteering for this job apparently. Yeah. <laughs> All right, one thirty one. You continue along the path, leaving the village behind. Wow, nothing happened. Yeah. That's it. That's incredible. Yeah. I mean, maybe maybe slow... one of the other things could have been bad. Yeah. 
Yeah, I do like that though. Like, hey, what are you doing here? I'm like, actually, I'm looking for something to eat. Yeah, it's that way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she'd, <laughs> she'd hit up the end. My wife runs yeah. it, you know. Like, <laughs> we don't take kindly to people like you around here. We only like people who want to stop at the inn. <laughs> yeah. It's just it's a tourist trap, yeah. yeah. You continue along the path, leaving the village behind. About in half, and a half an hour later, you reach the start of the climb into the hills and continue upwards. Five minutes later, you reach a fork offering you two ways onwards. Turn to 183. Hmm. 183. Ooh, is there art? There's art, Paul. Can you see the other page? Oh, here's this guy. Let it show show me. The, oh God, it's very. It's a little different. <laughs> show show your or show it on the. Uh, oh yeah. 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 The new oh, yeah. style art is. Uh, can't really. Oh, yeah, oh no. I can show it here. Yeah. Top down. Sorry. Yeah. This is my art. Ah. Oh. It's a little man in a tree. It's a lot yeah, more. Yeah. The, the old style. The old style art. The man is like partially merged with the tree. Yeah. Almost. God, I love old fantasy art so much. Yeah. Like, look at that. The overly it is. It's detailed. So, it's so different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's Sauce Master in the chat. It totally is like Terry Jones from The Life of Brian. <laughs> like, yeah. like, yeah, like I, Jennifer Berries. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I grew those. <laughs> All right. You ponder the two trails. As you consider the pass onwards, you hear weak cries from a large tree ahead of you. Cautiously, you step up to see an old man sitting on the lowest branch apparently afraid to jump down to the ground, which, considering his age, is not surprising. Okay. Wow. How long you been up there? <laughs> he pleads like a cat. With... He got stuck up in the tree. Mm -hmm. He pleads with you to assist, and you help him down. It transpires that he has been traveling from Dumpus and is <laughs> headed towards the outpost settlement in Annaland. His journey has been safe enough until he is waylaid by Elvins, but Elvins is spelled E-L-V-I-N-S. Whoa! Like elves and El Elvis and elves. Right. Makes they like. Just give me some distinct elves. Give me some limbo bread. Oh. <laughs> Are we sure it's not pronounced anal land? <laughs> Maybe it's anal land. I don't know. Yeah. It's going from dumpus to anal land. Yeah. Is that <laughs> give me some limbus bread. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> limbus bread and peanut butter and fried bananas. <laughs> I'm gonna die on the Rabbit fantasy bacon. toilet. <laughs> I'm going to be in a toilet and die on it. <laughs> uh, his journey has been safe enough until he was waylaid by elvins, robbed, and left in the tree. Why did they just left him in the... Did they put him up? They're like, all right, and you like, go there? Let's see what happened with Willow. <laughs> hey, Pat, give me some water. <laughs> in return for your kindness, he relates a rhyme which he feels may help you. I guess more with... It was Mad Mardigan in the... In yeah, the, it was Mad Mardigan. Yeah. See him through, he sees you not. Oh, see him, sorry. See him though, he sees you not. The black-eyed creature creeps, a guardian once, but now his lot. The key to freedom keeps. Great, thanks. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Sick, all right. I'm so glad you just paid me an exposure. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it literally just paid me in a poem. <laughs> oh, that's great. Can I have the answer? I don't know. <laughs> he is not sure exactly what the rhyme signifies, but he knows that the elvins are particularly keen on finding the key in question. Mm. He also presses on you his only possession, a page from a spell book. The spell described the spell described is incomplete. You have only part of it. Looking at it, it appears to be some sort of pest repelling spell. He then holds, or bids you farewell and heads off towards Kantapani. Okay. You may now choose your way onwards. Will you take the highway up to the hills or the low way along the valley? Alternatively, you may investigate a buzzing sound, buzzing coming from around the trees. <laughs> wow. I mean, you could have just let me make a decision of like, oh, I'll take a path, but there's some buzzing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, buzzing. Gold coins make a buzzing noise, they right? They do, yeah, yeah, when you drop them. Yeah, yeah. when you drop them. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking that maybe it's like a tumbler, <laughs> and they're just constantly... And then it's like... Bzzz. I mean, there can't be anything dangerous in the tree. That guy was sitting in it for a long time. Exactly, right? yeah. Flawless logic, Paul. Yeah. Uh, let's go to 200. As you look up, you can see a beehive around which a small swarm of bees are buzzing. You may climb up to the tree to investigate, 
or ignore it and continue onwards. Wow, we're already here. Yeah, we should really look into this. 270. Like, what is this strange uh, contraption that yeah. these bees are... A the, hive, you say? This is not going to end well, by the way. No. The bees swarm around you, but you are... Uh, the bees swarm around you, but you are powerless to defend yourself as you must use your hands to grip the tree. Throw one die. If you roll a one to four, then this is the number of stamina points you lose as the bees sting you. If you roll a five or a six, you are lucky and avoid being stung. When you reach the hive, you knock it down to the ground. Cutting open the hive on the ground, you may take with you uh, the wax and the honey. The honey will provide you with enough nourishment for one meal. Hey. So, if you roll four, that's bad. Yep. That's the worst case scenario. Five. Let's go. Oh. Boom. Let's go. <laughs> Watch dice are hot tonight, baby. Watch him as he dodges bees. Yeah. With no hands. Jaw rule truly blessing this stream. Uh, so now you've got. Uh, no, you've got, got so you've got an extra meal. So you've got five meals yeah. now, and you have wax. Yeah. Which I guess might be relevant for five somebody. meals. Wax. I like how <laughs> it just. There's just wax in the beehive. It's like not because usually it's processed, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, right? Like, Holy shit, these bees are industrious. Yeah. He just gets a gloop of wax up. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, bees. No problem. Get fucked. <laughs> Make some more wax. We're dying in the winter. All right, turn it. <laughs> pretty grim bees. It's well. <laughs> All right, bees. See you later. I hope you survive the winter. I mean, you knocked down their Home. nest and, and cut it open, so yeah. they're not surviving. Hey, don't make me the bad guy. <laughs> I mean, from the perspective of the bees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, from my perspective, the Jedi are evil. <laughs> you may continue your journey either by following the path into the valley or taking the high path into the hills. What do you think, beach, high or low? On the highway to hills. Oh, you're a high guy? Maybe, yeah. I mean, we'll be able to see stuff. Mm -hmm. We might get cold, though. Yeah. But the low valleys usually... Look, my, my thought process is mm -hmm. low valley, swamp, Poison, fire rats, mm, all yeah. kinds of flooding. Bad stuff. Yeah, yeah, flooding, wet. Yeah, but high road, hot, eventually gets cold. Snow. Yeah, Yetis. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I forgot all about the Yetis. Yeah, you know. See, this is the thing you have to think about. Mm -hmm. This is a hill. It's not like a mountain. Shut up, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, I'm just saying you're not becomes, like you're not like walking into like mountaineering territory. A hill like, becomes a mountain like so slowly, like before you yeah. know it, you go up enough hills and eventually you're climbing mountains. You're like, how did I get here? Yeah, yeah. So I didn't. I was just kidding. Twitch I mean, there are there are, there are there are hill giants, and you don't really hear about like valley. Oh, val you don't about really hear about giants. valley giants. Yeah, no, you it's never true. Hear about, but valleys have poison swamps. Yeah, yeah. it's true. Uh, okay, high road it is. They also have entrances to dwarf fortresses. What, the valleys? Probably. Don't you think that there'd be... Hills would be mountains, though, eventually. Mm, yeah, maybe. Yeah. So then... Yeah. But hills also mean uh, hobbits. Because they live well, in Yeah, mountains. that's true. Right? Yeah, let's go up the hills. Let's go up the hills. Uh, 164. Uh, 157, isn't it? <laughs> 157. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, good catch, Paul. A real like, Let's go up to the hills. And then <laughs> just you go down into the valley. Yeah. yeah. I did what? I just ask Beach for his input and then just pick the opposite on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Beach, where do you want to go? I want to go up the I hill. Mean, oh, sick. 157 it is. Into that, the valley. Oh, is that what, what I picked? Yeah, what What? What of the streams you were doing that, I seem to recall. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, gaslight, like, gatekeep, girl boss. <laughs> yeah, you picked valleys, Beach, don't you remember? Shit, I guess I did. The path winds upwards into the hills and you enter a wood. A wood. A wood. The afternoon sun glints through the trees, playing tricks on your eyes. Every so often, you catch a glimpse of some strange-shaped animal or other watching you, only to find out, or only to find that it is the silhouetted branches and leaves caught at an odd angle. You reach a position where you may rest and eat provisions if you wish. Turn to eighteen. If you wish to continue, turn to two ten. Why would we ever need to eat now? Yeah, I don't yeah. get it. Yeah, I don't think you, it's like you could, because you might have been like attacked by the bees and stuff i guess yeah yeah oh but, i guess this is like a yeah like a rest point yeah but we don't need to yeah. because we are very good at this game mm -hmm. turn to 210 wow i really miss doing this yeah that break was good okay 
The climb continues for two or three hours as the path twists this way and that up the hillside. Soon, the air gets cold and the sun sets, making it difficult for you to see. However, the moon is full and we'll be able to light the way as it gets darker. Yes. Would you like to continue further, marching through the night, or will you stop and make camp to get some sleep? We are going to make camp. Yeah, let's I feel do like that is the game trying to give us enough rope to hang ourselves. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's, be, let's be cautious. I'm on to you, Steve Jackson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Steven. And Steven. Mm -hmm. 283. You settle down and make camp for the night. You may take provisions here, and if you do so, you may add two stamina points if you have not yet eaten since leaving Annalyn. Uh, or one stamina point if you have already eaten on your journey. You may only eat if you have provisions with you. As you curl up... Okay, so... So you you ate already today, so you should be fine on that, I think. Which means that well, the rest only, gives you one extra. Oh, no, we ate in the village. Yeah. yeah, you ate in the village, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you get... We get we got what we got in the village, but we also gained one because we're having a rest, right? Yeah. That's what they're I'm saying? I'm just going to assume that this adds on. Yeah? Right? Yeah. They don't say... I don't think they've ever said that... No, well, no. This is saying if you eat, if you eat provisions, but you had eaten before, like you don't have to eat right now. Yeah. You no, know, but I'm getting my extra stamina point because I've already eaten. Oh yeah. no, wait. Is that only if I've eaten? Like, if I eat provisions now, then I get one. Oh, okay. I don't get one for free. No, I thought it was like, like. Oh, you ate today. <laughs> I thought it's because you were resting that you ended no. up with that well, one. No, okay. no, no, no. Later okay. on in this paragraph, it also it says about the rest. Ah. Oh, okay. Well. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. As you curl up in your blanket to sleep, there is a chance that you may encounter a wandering night creature. Remember, remember this reference, as Ooh. you will return here afterwards and turn to 123. I invited into my bed. Night. <laughs> well, creature of the night. Is it odd? <laughs> no, it's an owl bear. It bites your face off. Ah, shit! <laughs> that jokes on you. I'm into that shit. It's an owl bear with a big fat dumper. <laughs> 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 oh no, the owlbear stick! Oh no, it's so thick! It's like a dugong! <laughs> Alright, night creatures are less likely to approach you in your camp, so you may add two points to the die you roll would be required to make. Uh, okay, right. so 123 first. We gotta remember that we're on 283. 123. Okay. Roll one die to see whether you encounter any night creatures. So, a one and a two, we got a giant bat, a three, we got a wolfhound, a four, we get a werewolf, and a five plus, no encounter. And you Ooh. have plus two on this roll. And I have plus two. So really, we just don't want to roll so a one and a two. So, a one and a two is all that it will. Oh, yeah. Well, we don't want to get a two because that's no, a no. werewolf. Yeah, one, two, three, sir. Fiddlesticks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wolfhound. That's bad. You must fight the creatures you encounter. The following spells may be used. Do we want to... Oh, we're really just going to grip it and rip it. Yeah. All right, Twitch chat. So, we have to start a poll. Your options are... <laughs> option number one. Ran. R-A-N. Uh, all right. I, I should be able to start this poll here. Okay. That, that option is run, isn't it? Like. So, right. while Paul makes the poll, we'll wait. Okay. Uh, okay, poll is going. Oh, jeez. Because he, he, he knows like, all the things. Oh, I mean, B's got like a 30 seconds. Just, yeah. B's, Paul's like, Paul's done. <laughs> you know what, Paul? You're too efficient for your own good. Uh, I mean, I started writing it when I saw that there was a possibility. Uh, that... uh, yeah. Well, I guess we're casting a spell. All right, and it's all done through uh, Twitch chat, isn't it? The yeah. poll is. Yeah. So theoretically, you could you could just fight this thing. Yeah. What, what are you... So it said add two to... I'm fighting a wolfhound. Right, because you got a seven yeah. skill, six stamina, and you have to roll equal or under your skill score to do damage. So you could either do this, you could either do a spell or just fight it. Yes. Uh, fighting it for us is bad though, because we're bad at fighting. Right. You're not. You're not quite as good at fighting as the fighter is. We have six skill. Well, big, <laughs> big one. Oh really? Uh, okay. So I guess we'll see if that four, four fifty three baby. Go big or go home. Yeah. You make the uh, the wolfhound big. Yeah. Right. 
It's so big. It starts jumping on the giant keyboard. <laughs> or the giant piano. Yes. Ding, 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 <laughs> Tom Hank comes in and sues the werewolf. <laughs> All right, deduct two stamina points. You cast the spell and begin to grow to three times your normal size. The night creature stops in its tracks. You may, if you wish, test your luck. If you are lucky, the beast takes flight and runs back into the woods. If you are unlucky, or if you did not test your luck, the creature continues to attack, but you may double your skill score as you attack it. Return to Whoa. 123. Well, hmm. so I guess... Like, we're, if we attack it, we take damage as well. So yeah. that's the thing well, that happens, but yeah. I think we just fight it because if our skill score is doubled, we have 12 skill and there's no way we can't roll a hit. Mm -hmm. Right? We might take some damage, but... All right, so you take you take two two stamina just yeah. for casting the spell. So we're at twenty four. Okay. And then I think we're just gonna fight it straight up, and hope we don't take a lot of damage. It only has seven skills, so. Oh, okay. And it's got six stamina. So that's that's three hits. Yeah, three hits. So let's we're just gonna roll. Ours are the black dice, and the monster are the red dice. Okay. And. Oh, we add our skill to it. It's a right. contested. Right, that's what it is. So they rolled a 14, and we rolled a 18. Ah. So we won round one. Great. So two damage. Yeah. Two damage. Go again. Do we not do three times our... Because we're giant, don't we do three times our... No, we just double our skill. Oh, we double... Okay, okay. So nine, 16, and we got a 17. So we win again. And then last combat... We win. Boom. All right. Okay. We saved ourselves a bunch not of health. Not so tough, Wolfhound. I think saving the luck is important, too. Good yeah, choice to chat. Yeah, too. Yeah. Good, yep, good choice. Good choice. Mm -hmm. I mean, big making you bigger was, uh, I guess, kind of a gimme. But mm. there it is. You never sometimes, know, though. Sometimes that's how it goes. Yeah. Who knows what gum would have done. Yeah. yeah. It's wild. Despite being slow and dangerous behind the wheel, Twitch Shatters can be proven useful. Otaku uh, Jeff beat the shit out of a dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the elvens are watching from another hill and he's like, he's beating the shit out of that dog. He made himself gigantic and he kicked the shit out of this dog. <laughs> it was he a, it was wolf a wolf hound. It was a yeah. wolf hound. Yeah, and like, oh, you mean like an Irish wolf hound? A dog? Yeah. What's, uh, what were we on? 253? Is that the page? Uh, we were on 183. 183? No, we weren't. 183? Oh, sorry, 283. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay, 283. <laughs> All, right. All right, so we won the, we defeated the creature. If you encounter no night creatures or, sorry, after your night's sleep, you may add either two stamina points if you encountered no night creatures or one stamina point if your sleep was disturbed. Uh -huh. So we get one stamina point back. That's good. So right. you're only down net one. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, that actually was not as bad as I thought it would be. Pretty good night, good yeah. choice. <laughs> then you set off along the trail, turn to 31. 31. Did you eat at all on your first day of your journey since you left Anilan? If not, you're feeling very hungry and must lose three stamina points, turn to 246. Well, I ate, so. Yeah. 246. Oh, that it's hunger gonna, thing is. I like that it's going to check in every single yeah. time, hey, isn't did it? did you eat? Hi. Well, like, you forget to eat. It's what I like. Th this book has like 450 like entries in it. Yeah. Uh, and, but like a large chunk of the ones between like 300 and 400 are just like, this spell works. This spell doesn't work. This uh -huh. spell, does go back. Like, they've got a ton of just like little like two line entries. Right. You explode. <laughs> I can't wait. I cannot wait. To just read, you explode. Yeah. You win. That's it. No, you win. Yeah. <laughs> the earth cracks in half. Like a kinder egg. <laughs> um, as the second day of your journey breaks, you march through the cool morning air of the hills, having now climbed several hundred feet. Are, are we taking regular breaks? Yeah, after this. We'll read okay, this. And cool. Then. You reach the brow of a hill and stop in your tracks. To your left is a clearing in which several poles are firmly planted in the ground. Atop the poles are 
heads. Oh dear. Some recently fixed. Oh. Some semi decayed. Mm -hmm. Human heads, goblin heads. Okay, good. Wait. And, and one or two heads of creatures you do not recognize, all with sewn up eyes and mouths. A large X painted on a broad tree is obviously intended as a warning to venture no further. Oh, good, good. I'm glad they put the egg. Otherwise, you wouldn't have known this was a dangerous place. Yeah. yeah. Ahead, the path forks to the right and left, but you cannot be sure which path you were warned not to take. Will you, <laughs> Great will you continue your climb along the right-hand path, or will you take the left-hand path? Which we'll find out after this legally obligated commercial break. <laughs> What up? Welcome back to Dice Friends. We took our shoes off. Mm-hmm. Feeling comfy. Aw, oh, Beej, you're leaving money on the table. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on. I was just about to say, no, you can't see them, but then Beej was like, hey, look at my... Yeah, look at my shoes. Look at my, look at my foot. <laughs> Yo. Shows on the bottom of my sock. Show socks, streamer. Mm-hmm. No. hundred bucks. <laughs> All right, so we've come across a bunch of severed heads. And a tree right. with an X on it, but that we don't really know what that means. I am assuming X means buried treasure. Right, yeah. Check out the tree. Check out the tree. But we can only do two things. Mm. We can go down the right-hand path or the left-hand path. Right, we don't know what the tree is telling us, so yeah. right. It's like literally the entire reason why the X is there, which is to warn you off, is ineffective. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> All right. Oh, Vaseline or Barco, did you decide which one was which? Yep. What's with... We're, go we're going right. We're going right? Mm-hmm. Mm, a team right person, huh? <laughs> wow, well, I never would have pegged you. All right, turn to 40. What? Right oh. is 68. Oh. Well, well go to 40 then. Go to 68. We're already there? No, 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 okay. no, 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 I'm reading these wrong, my bad. 68. <coughs> I think I picked 40 because... It's the last option, so I thought it was the one on the right. Ah, that would make sense, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not actually reading these books. I'm just assuming. Like, I don't Flying even read through. English. Yeah, yeah, I just like, I guess. <laughs> it's a pretty good guess. <coughs> Excuse me. You press on, climbing up the hillside for several hours until you are not far from the top. Wow, literally nothing happened. We just walked by a bunch of severed heads and we're like, hoggers. Wow. <laughs> Wasn't that interesting? Yeah. Then you hear a faint sound of bustling activity. Tramping feet, grunting voices, and the clanking of metal against rock make you stop and listen. You decide to leave the path and continue cautiously through the woods. A short distance onwards, you hide behind a tree and survey a clearing ahead. Ooh. A number of goblins, it's oh. capitalized, are in the clearing in front of an open cave. It appears that they are mining the cave as they trudge in and out of the opening, carrying large bowls full of glistening rocks and dull metallic nuggets. From your position, you may easily slip into the cave to see whether you can find anything of value, or you may ignore the mine and slip around the side to a path level leading onwards and down the si far side of the hill. Should see if we can get into form a union. Yeah, hey, uh, hey, how much do you make? <laughs> we should talk about this, right? This is just making an open conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Wait, yeah, it's like, well, how much do you make? Uh huh. And how much does the boss goblin make? <laughs> Interesting. How much Interesting. is he lifted today? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, one set. Let's go check out the cave. I think we okay. can sneak yeah, in. One seventy-five. Yeah. What are they gonna do? Stab us? Oh no! <laughs> you creep closer round the side of the hill to the entrance of the cave. You seize your chance when all is quiet to nip inside and hide in the shadows. Following the passage cautiously, you come to a junction where you may fork to the left or to the right. Are we yeah, flipping for that one again? This, yeah, time, this time it did left first and I before. I want to give you some agency too. Yeah, dude. let's go left this left? time. Yeah, okay. Sure, why not? 138. Dude, dude, dude. I like everybody to just be able to choose. Mm -hmm. The passage continues until you reach a large stone cut door blocking your progress. Will you try the door handle? <laughs> Okay. Or return to the junction and take the other passage. It's like that door that Jesus got buried behind. Right, right? yeah. Big stone circle. Yeah. Did it have a handle? <laughs> well, it helped them roll it, right? Yeah. It's like, you know, you just turn the hand. Jesus, did you try the handle? Been in here for three days. Yeah, never thought yeah, of trying never, the handle. 
Oh man. To, to be fair, it was dark in the cave because the door was in the way, but yeah. Also, he was dead for some of that, I think. Oh yeah, he was. Right. So he woke up and just like, moved it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, was it that Jesus was resurrected in three days? He was resurrected in like four hours. Mm -hmm. And I was just stuck in the cave for the rest of the time. Trying to figure that shit out, yeah. yeah so try turning it off and turning it on again. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's try the door handle. <laughs> 255. There's no way this ends poorly. Mm -hmm. The door opens. Right? That's it. That's the end. No. Of course it would, yeah. <laughs> the room inside is dirty and sooty with dust from the mines. It is square, and a door opposite leads onwards. Sitting behind a makeshift desk is a large, filthy goblin who raises his head and sniffs the air as you walk in. His face is black with soot. <laughs> you smell a strange intruder. That's the best I can do. Okay? That's fine. I'm yeah. Here. yeah, yeah. He challenges. You are not permitted here. Will you prepare to fight him or leave as he wishes? Why? I love that. Like a goblin is like, "Hey, who are you?" You can just be like, "Oh, sorry, I'm out of here." Bye. <laughs> He's like, "Yeah." I'm gonna go get something for it's my throat, throat. So you yeah. figure out what you want to do to him. <laughs> Uh, fighting seems like it's not our strong point, and we're also... But if we just leave... Then what actually happens? Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Then again, like, it's... You know, this how, is just like a little side thing. Like, I don't know if it's worth it. Go how hard... Okay, goblins are notoriously weak. Let's, let's metagame this. There's no way that we lose to one goblin. Mm, unless right? he, like, calls more. Yeah, but that's a problem for future Otaku Jeff. Mm. Yeah. Let's go to 47. I know fighting's not our strong point, but we're going to fight. The goblin senses your defiance and rises with a large stone club in his hand. You may fight him. Or cast a spell. Mm. All right, Twitch chat. Your choices are Raz, Bam, Tell, Zap or Yag? Now remember, we're all on the same side here. You want to pick what you think is good. Okay? Give him a Yag. I'm going to Yag on him. Uh, some of these things might not be spells, by the way. Oh, yeah. There, are, chance, there, are, yeah. there are fake outs where it's just like, I will cast the power of Yag. Yeah. And, you know... It's like the goblin's like, what? What's that? Yeah. You're like, you know, the massive, the scary spell. Yeah. That's not. That's not a spell. It's not a spell. It's not a spell. This is a spell. And he hits you with his club. Mm. It spells defeat. Yeah. yeah. I I cast <laughs> hit you with a club. Yeah. I mean, you can just fight him. Like he's skill seven, stamina six. So he's pretty weak. But I mean, skill seven still pretty spooky. We only have skill six, so that's a pretty even fight. Mm. Oh, right, right. Yeah. I forgot that against the... We are the, a weak, puny wizard. I, I forgot that against the wolf, you were, like, super big. Now try and... I'm kind of glad that you... Because oh, I, I feel like big in this context would be actually bad, because you're, like, in a cave. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad big wasn't an option again. So we know big makes us bigger. Which is a cool thing that we can all figure out together, right? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Presumably, I don't think they change. No, they wouldn't. No. They don't actually change. So it should be the same every time. Do we have a winner? Uh, it's just finishing up right now. Although it looks like Yag is pretty high on the list. Maybe oh, we shouldn't yeah. have been talking about yeah. it, thereby influencing. <laughs> There's the... no way Yag is any good. There is no way. Yeah, if you uh, so if yeah, if you choose one that isn't a real one, you use I think it's five stamina, and yeah. just nothing happens. Yeah, we could die here. You could have killed us. I'll be like, Yag? Whoa! <laughs> well, Yag it is. All right, Yag it is. 289. Remember, Twitch chat, this is your bed. You got to sleep in it. 289. Deduct five stamina points. There is no such spell as this. Return to 47 and turn choose again. So we lose five health. We're going down to 20 or 19. So you can either choose again or What's second? just fight him. Sorry? What got second? Uh, zap. 
Okay, zap it is. 438. Yeah, do you really think a wizard had a spell called zap? Five points. Deduct four stamina points. You cast a spell and a bolt of lightning shoots from your fingertip at the creature, hitting it square in the chest. It reels and falls backwards, dead. Holy shit. On the floor. You can cast a magic missile. Yep. So, I mean, it, that whole thing cost you nine, like, is effectively you got hit for nine damage. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't worth it. Wow. What if Yag again? No. Uh-uh. <laughs> All right. Well, Zap Unbelievers. I can't believe you yagged us. <laughs> Remember that show in the, like, 2000s? Y Jag? Yeah. Yeah, it's like that. Yeah, yag. But Yag. Yag. Yeah. I love military court drama TV series or something. I think that's what it was, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, Judge yeah. Judge Advocate General. Okay, it was it was Navy, like yeah, it was yeah. like Navy military Navy. Yeah. Navy. In, in a few good men, that was that was what the um, that's the group that was trying the case in uh, um, that Tom Cruise was a part of. Mm -hmm. He was part of the Judge Ad Advocate General, essentially. Jag was great, Adam. Shut up. <laughs> I didn't say anything bad about Jag. Okay. Quit projecting. Oh, and then they became NCIS. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Don't project on me, Twitch chat, okay? Uh, 186. Oh, this sucks. There's a little in the room of value, but the dead goblin wears a silver key around its neck with the numbers 111 on it. The key. We had to find the key. The key to his hotel room. <laughs> Oh, we killed this goblin. If we, if we just asked, he probably would have given it to us. Yeah. Be like, I'll see you later. <laughs> Is this a kissing book? Yeah, it could be. Yeah. <laughs> if we keep killing everybody. You may take this key with you and continue either onwards through the door ahead or back the way you came. Well, I mean, we came this far, so. Yeah, I mean, if you go back the way you came now, mm -hmm. that would be uh, disrespecting the dead goblin, really. <laughs> Yeah, right? Yeah, he killed the goblin, took the key, and be like, you know what? I'm going to go. <laughs> been fun, been real. Uh, 239. The door opens on well-oiled hinges, and you are in a pitch-black passageway. You may cast a spell if you wish. Oh god, this is good. You know what? I think, I, just, I think we need to take away the stamina cost for these spells, because... <laughs> We are just gonna die. No, no, no. This will be. This will be fine. Okay. They, we won't get screwed so by you're, this. You don't. You don't have to cat. Like yeah, you could no, just go down the. It's fine for them, right? All right. <laughs> All right. So, you can cast a spell. There is sus. That's definitely getting picked. Oh, There's no. no way. There is no way that oh, sus does not get picked. Jesus. Sus, far, fix, bag, or how? <laughs> how? How? <laughs> well, the spell. The the. Uh, Pull it's going. Yeah. <laughs> how's pretty good, but I don't know in today's uh, cultural landscape how sus does not come out the winner. Right? How is currently winning. Oh. oh. How? <laughs> don't ever you play Among Us? Any Amongers? Any Amongers in the chat? Huh? Not not I. No, I mean, you never, no. I mean, never among I have among uh, I have among like a couple times, but I, yeah. It seems like a game you would hate. Ultimately, yeah. Yeah, doesn't seem like your fate, your kind of thing. I won that one time at Secret Hitler. Uh, me and Cameron, we were the fascists, and we won. Uh, and I was like, I'm glad that I didn't have a watch to tell me what my heartbeat was because it was just going nuts. But I was like, cool on the outside as I lied to my best friend that I wasn't a fascist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they'll do uh, that though. Keep that in mind. This whole time. <laughs> no. How is the winner by far? Wow. Uh. No, there's no way that's good. 454? Please, God. I'm going to use my one time. It's a real thing. It's a oh. real thing. It's a how? <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Did have two stamina points. Okay. You cast this spell and consider both directions. Inside your mind, you begin to feel it differently when you face through the door and when you face back into the room. Looking through the door, a hot sweat comes over your face. And looking back into the room at the at your entrance door, the feeling subsides and you feel calm. <laughs> Will you press on ahead through the door or retrace your steps through the room? So you roll perception. So this is is this is this like giving you like a some sort of um, foresight? Foresight. So one way, 
you feel hot. It's a vibe check, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nah. We just vibe check. Vibes yep. are off, but we're going to press on because we have a key and we got to find the door. Yeah, you're right. And maybe we're getting like, maybe it's just a sauna. Oh, yeah, that's you true. Know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could be lava <laughs> behind there. Get our auntie open the door and lava just comes through. <laughs> yeah, you die. <laughs> Should have taken the warning. Mm-hmm. It was like on Let's Know. Ben and I were playing that, like, uh, like it's like essentially like a horror movie that you play and you make decisions. The quarry, right? yeah, the yeah. quarry. Yeah. And one of them, this girl was like off by herself, and I was like controlling her, and she's like, "Oh no!" And she's like a vlogger, which mm-hmm. she's like vlogging, and she's like, "Oh no, do I open up this door and, it, and release the creature that will inevitably kill me, or do I go check out that box?" And I was like, "Well, I opened the door," and she opened the door, and a creature jumped out and fucking killed her. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. They went wrong. She that, called that. Wow. That, that video would go so viral, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People would be like, yeah, like top 10 fails of the. Of yeah. the month. Oh, she didn't actually know. No, no she okay. had no idea. Okay, yeah. great. That's good. Because she heard a noise <laughs> up above her. It was like creaking. She's like, oh, no. Do I open? Oh, no. Uh, all right. Six. Six, six, six. 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 Yeah. It did literally tell me. But you know what? I'm going for kill count. Mm. As you tread carefully along the passage, dust falls from the low ceiling. Precarious wooden beams hold the walls back, and you stumble and curse as your foot strikes one of the beams. Suddenly, a pile of rubble falls from the ceiling in front of you, and a cracking of wood stops you cold. The roof is collapsing. Oh, good. Will you turn and run back to the door, or run on ahead to avoid the falling rocks? Wow. I've never been one for half measures. Right. So we should double down. Yeah, agreed. Okay. 128. Please don't kill me. You dash on ahead, but suddenly realize you are running into an unknown mine with perhaps your only exit sealed off behind you. If you wish to continue downwards, turn to 24. <laughs> Otherwise, you may turn around. They're giving you back. so many chances yeah, to sure back are. out of this. But, but maybe go. that's just a trap. That's a trap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I know Steve Jackson as well as anybody. Yeah. I can look into his mind's eye and know how he I'll, works. I love going going into the mind of, of Otaku Jeff. He's like, hmm, not going into this mind that I don't know how to get out of. That's the trap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Let's go keep going downwards. Turn to 24. The crashing shaft behind you makes you run faster along the black passage. Suddenly you gasp as your foot fails to touch the ground below and you fall downwards into a pit. You can cast a spell. Sud, fall, uh, riss, zen, or sus. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're doing it. I especially yeah. love. Hey, uh, not trying to nudge the things here, but maybe fall would be good. <laughs> You'd think, right? F-A-L, huh? Mm-hmm. Maybe that's, you fall faster. No, right. no. <laughs> I would bet my paycheck it's like feather fall. So we, so we ran, we ran into the darkness and then we are falling into a pit. And this sounds an awful lot like some other books that we've done. Sus for, <laughs> sus for suspend? Uh oh. Mm. Oh no. I definitely. Or zen? Zen? I mean, then, then you're falling, but at least you're, you're calm and peaceful. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying to influence the boat. But I am trying to influence the vote. I do love that. Uh, Riz, maybe rise. Somebody, ooh, that's good. Somebody, somebody pointed out that they're like, um, they're like, remember the time that remember Otaku Jeff once threw himself at a door until he died. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, that wasn't this Otaku. That that no. was that was one of Otaku Jeff's uh, long lost cousins. Oh, this yeah. is like Rogue Legacy now. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like James Bond. Mm, yes. I like that even yeah, better. Yeah, Otaku Jeff is James Bond of <laughs> fantasy. <laughs> All right. Foul wins. Although Riss oh. is off by two. Okay. <laughs> so we it's have a, a very, backup. Yeah. If this kills 31% us. 31% said FAL and 30% said RIS. Mm. Well. All right. Let it be known that I've never influenced a vote in my life. Mm-hmm. 399 was Adam correct. Deduct two stamina points. Your fall is broken and you float gently down to the ground below. Hey. Landing softly on your knees. Let's go! Good call. Good call. Wow, I'm smart. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. <laughs> We're just cashing in stamina points. Yeah, we got we got some to burn. 
13. Let's see what the sus spell does. We will. No. We will at some point because I know it's going to get voted for. Yeah, exactly. It's actually a miracle that we've made it this far. <laughs> and really, if you want to see what the sus spell does, you can only blame yourself. Vote harder. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. You should be convincing everybody else in chat. Yeah. I mean, there is an option that, like, you can give people more votes by, like, spending... Uh, channel points? Channel points or bits Whoa. and stuff. But I don't know if we want to... Get no, into that. that's, yeah. I'm only and I'm only opening this for like a minute, so yeah. Yeah, it's not like a lot of time for people to collect themselves. It's all because of these cowards who are easily swayed by Adam's <laughs> words, <laughs> or I'm just so charismatic that it can't be helped. That's true. Those right? glasses are really d playing it for right. You. Yeah. yeah. See, mm -hmm. I can get used to this. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm falling like. Whoa! Feather falls. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One ten. Yeah, that's Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes on you, Twitch chat. Wow. <laughs> it's like when your dad shaves his beard and right. you're a baby. You're like, yeah. ah. no, <laughs> no, no. That happened to me. Yeah. Yeah. One day I'm gonna shave this off. If I'm, I'm thinking about it. And frighten some children. Frighten some Twitch chatters, mm -hmm. you know. Some literal babies. Okay. You pick yourself up off the floor and look around. A shaft of light penetrates the pit, and you are relieved to see a passage leading to the daylight outside. Your hand is resting on a furry object, which at first you thought was some kind of creature. But now you are able to see it is a dusty boot. Oh. Okay. It's a boot with the fur. Oh, wow. Hmm. Everybody in this pit's looking at her. <laughs> Get on the floor. So you, you did all this falling and got low. Yeah. We go low, 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 low. low. <laughs> all right, not far from it is another, and you collect the pair and dust them clean. You now own a pair of fur skin boots, which you take with you. The fur, the fur is boring skin. And you put the boots in your backpack. Why wouldn't we put the boots on uh, our feet? Maybe they don't fit? Uh, Is that the yeah. whole reason? Why would we take them Why if they don't we fit? just take the boots? We're like, wow, nice boots! Yeah. I just like, I like you, you follow, it's like, the whole place is collapsing. Yeah. You're running through the pitch blackness while this thing's collapsing, and then you fall down a hole. You're like, ah, feather fall! Oh, oh, thank goodness. Oh, hey, boots. <laughs> <laughs> but, but also, I love how they're like, you put your hand on something furry, you thought it was a creature, and you didn't freak out. Yeah. You were just like, oh, wow, I just put my hand down. Like, if you're in a dark pit, yeah. you put your hand down, touch fur, you're most likely going to go. <gasps> <laughs> yeah. And then See, you're like, oh, good. I'm glad these are new boots, because I just shit in mine. <laughs> you know what? Fur furry boots, mm -hmm. uh, they're very warm. Yeah, which is why you had the premonition of warmth this way. Ah, right. <laughs> uh, all right. So, following the passage, you emerge from the mine into the woods by a pathway that runs downhill. Turn to two hundred two. What's the key for? Guess we'll never know. I guess we'll never know. Yeah. Huh. Two hundred two. Oh, well. I mean, this is definitely one of those books that's designed that you can, you know. Theoretically play it. Replay. Yeah. And do different things. You leave the mine along the path downwards through the woods. Continuing for a couple of hours, it is now late afternoon, you are relieved to see a small village ahead of you set into this hillside. This is the one we just visited. <laughs> we just came back. Hey, what do you want here? We're looking for the... It. Ah, it's just over there. <laughs> we're in, we're, it's Groundhog Day. Yeah. Phil? <laughs> Ned? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 28. Ned? <laughs> Ryerson? <laughs> Ned Ryerson! You walk into the village. Young hill dwellers pass you and stare at your strange clothes. Their own attire is rough by comparison, and everyone wears their hair long, but piled up on their heads. You pass without incident into the center of the village. Will you look for an inn for the night or find an alehouse and relax? Those are your only two. You can't do both, apparently. Nope. One or the other. Huh. I don't think getting drunk is the answer. No, also, definitely not. I don't like the idea of traveling while hungover. Oh, yeah. That yeah, sounds right? miserable. Yeah. Sounds absolutely miserable. I'm going to go to 211. Yeah, go to the inn and get robbed. Why would you say something like that? Because the books. If we get robbed. We're due. 
<laughs> we're due to have something terrible happen. Holy crap, they really jacked up the prices here. <laughs> the inn will charge you three gold pieces for a night's rest and two gold pieces for nourishing food. What do you mean I have to pay village tax? <laughs> what the fuck is this tourism village shit? Village tax. <laughs> If you wish to pay either of these, turn to 161. If the price is too high for you, turn to 62. Well, I mean, yeah, I'll pay both. Whatever. Okay. It's yeah. five gold. So 161. Yeah. 161. We can always sell this key. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure somewhere we're really going to find a buyer. Yeah. What's that? It's a key. Ignore You're... the, like, goblin blood on the key. Yeah. <laughs> Your meal is just being served. If you wish to sit down to eat, pay the two gold pieces and have your bowl of skunk bear stew. Great. You may add three stamina points if you eat. Yes. Yeah. Don't let. Don't worry about the name. Yeah. It's not really a bear. It's a regional <laughs> dialect. You will not be able to eat your own provisions at the inn. <laughs> it's like a movie theater. <laughs> Can't bring your own snacks in. Your bag's just dripping with like a liter of honey anyway, right? They're like, you should not eat that here, <laughs> yeah. whatever's in there. It's a soup. <laughs> if you wish to rest for the night, pay the three gold. The bed you are given is not particularly clean, but it's comfortable, and you may add five stamina points. All oh, right. baby, we're back up to 21. Yeah, and I get That's to the best five gold I've ever spent. And we get to sleep and in I've our clothes. I've spent five gold in a lot of places. <laughs> I've been to a lot of Airbnbs. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Much more expensive than this and not as good. And you had to do chores. Yeah, we had a curfew. Yeah. What's up with the Airbnbs having a curfew? Yeah. I don't get it. Yeah. Just stay at a hotel. Yeah, it might as well at that point, mm -hmm. right? If you wish to eat but not rest, turn to 62. If you have stayed the night, now turn to 45. 45! All right. I do like that you don't seem to be, like, in a particular hurry. No. To get this quest done? Yeah, you're, yeah. like, you're like just kind of, you know, traveling and staying the night yeah. and... You just you're like well, let, Let's make a journey. Let's make like a, a journey of it. You know, yeah. let's have some fun. I mean, you only get to go go to Kakabad once. It's huh? true, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> Mempeng's got you know not going anywhere. Mampeng. Mampeng. Mam. Peng. Mampeng. Did you eat it all yesterday? If you ate at the inn or took provisions, you suffer no penalty. But if you have not eaten during the day, you're now hungry and lose three stamina points. I did, Mom. Thanks. There are two ways on from the village of Christatanti. Oh. Choose your path by turning either to 125 or 226. Are we going to give me any information on the path? Or are we just... It doesn't even say left or right. Wow. Yeah, it's just like, all right, Beach, 120 or 125 or 226? Uh, 125. Okay. 125. Just kidding. 226. <laughs> oh, get absolutely pranked, bro. <laughs> How does it feel? <laughs> Your choices don't matter. No. It's fine. <laughs> you leave the village. I hope we die for this. By yeah. Way. yeah. Yeah. Sitting against the wall on the way out is a blind beggar, and as you pass, he asks you for alms. He looks a sorry sight, skinny and sparsely clothed. His eyes are painted with a dark dye to indicate his blindness. You are considering whether to toss him a gold piece when an ox cart comes up the road. Just See? runs him over. <laughs> wow, you just watched somebody die. It's a parable. <laughs> Seeing you were a stranger, the driver asked you if you would like a lift. <laughs> Hello, stranger. Want to get in my cart? Wait, wait, hang on. Does he have candy in his cart? Yeah. It's weirdly. Will you accept or refuse and instead toss the beggar a gold piece? What? So we can either ride with this dude yeah. for ask, ass, or grass, as Sauce Master points out, yeah. or we can just stand around and let it cost us money. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Now, Beach, I know you're in, you're in charge of Lording Ready Runs Finances. Yeah. But what if? I'm a fan of charity, though. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, okay. like we do it every year. We turn we turn down other charities. Yeah, but I've read your blog. Yeah, you don't I know. like it. I am a fascist. Beach apparently, he hates charity. <laughs> His secret vlog that only I have the link to. Yeah, yeah. I write it only for you, really. <laughs> hey, Adam. Heather wishes I would quit it, but yeah, <laughs> like, he likes it. He likes it. It gives him something to do. Yeah, it's like just just talk to him. Yeah. Like it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of passive aggressive to like write a blog. Yeah. It's it's so Beach can subtweet me. 
All right. Uh, yeah, let's toss a, toss a gold coin. Gold coin, Witcher, et cetera, et cetera. You know, toss a coin to, yeah. your, toss a coin to your beggar. 244. You toss him a gold piece. Down to 11. Okay. You are kind. Uh, you are kind. <laughs> Man, what kind of voice is this beggar going to have? You are kind. Yeah, it's good. The beggar says, feeling the, feeling the coin, he becomes excited. Why? This is a gold piece. Totally he exclaims, scary. you you are too generous to a poor sightless beggar. Generosity of this sort, of this sort must not go unrewarded. Ooh. Taking a copper key from his pocket, he gives it to you, insisting that you take it. Years ago, I lived in Care. Ooh. He tells you, Care is my home, and in City Port, I watched. I don't know why he's talking like this now, but City Port, I watched over prisoners in the jail. But Care is an evil place, inhabited by all manner of creatures. Beware the red eyes in Care or my fate will befall you, and you too will have to turn to begging for a living. Hmm. Care is also wary of strangers, but this key will help you. And should you be cap or should you be captured by the city guards? The key has a number, 206, stamped onto it. You thank the beggar and continue. So this is something for the next book. Yeah. I think. Yeah. So you've got one key with 111 on it. Yeah. The silver key has 111 on it, and this key has... 206 on 206 it. 206 on it, which that is was, probably important. We should, yeah, maybe make note of those numbers. Cannot overstate how much you miss these. Mm-hmm. They are, by I, all descriptions, bangers. I After you started doing the beggar's voice, I was really hoping he would be like, I am going to come with you for the entire rest <laughs> of this yes. journey. <laughs> Don't walk too fast. <laughs> yeah. Also, I'm going to talk a lot. <laughs> yeah. I'm uh, going to have a running commentary. <laughs> That's definitely happened to me in like doing streams of, you know, play, like playing RPGs or something. Yeah. Like, I'm going to do a funny voice, voice for this character. <laughs> oh, no, they're part of my party now. Yep. <laughs> and that beggar was Tom Hanks. <gasps> and now you know the, the rest, rest of, of the, the story. story. <laughs> <laughs> God, I miss that guy. That beggar was Lance Hendrickson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Turn to 58. Look, I'm trying to get away from the only Eastern European accent. Yeah. And I'm trying my hardest, okay? I'm not a voice actor, right? You have to cut me some slack. I mean, yeah, I think you are a voice actor now. Now mm -hmm. I am. I have mm -hmm. a quite a rich repertoire. Yeah. It's like a six shooter. I'm like a cowboy. Which voice do you want? They're like, we just need the Eastern European. I'm like, damn it, every time. What am I, Rob Schneider? <laughs> they just get Rob Schneider is a stapler. You follow the path for half the morning and reach a fork where you may either continue straight on or turn westwards. A lot of a lot of straight fork, or west. a lot of forks. West. Where's the map? Hold yeah, up. Yeah. Right. Is there, I, I, where, I don't think I have the map. Kind of even, I mean, westward just takes us to There's, the border. I don't have the map in my book. The, the map way. is not like super detailed. Yeah, but okay. Wait, Come maybe we, this map is better. Nope, no. Nope. Where did we, we're in. We started in Analand, we're in the Shamatanti Hills. You we went were just through, in Biratanti, right? You, were, you went through uh, Kentopani. That, that was the first little place. Yeah. Kentopani, and then we didn't go to Dumpus. <laughs> no. Nope. But that's where the old guy was from. Isn't this Biratanti? No. Isn't that where we are right now? So West Contopati? No, not Contopati. No, that's okay. where we. That's, that's was the straight first away. Place. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're in like the area of Biratanti. Birat Biratati. Okay. I think we're in this area. So we can go to Care, but we could lose our eyes. So that's I mean, West, right? That, Never eat. No, that's no, where the next book takes place. West just goes off. Yeah, West just goes like. Off the map. Off the map. But does it I mean loop maybe back it wraps around? around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah! I think it loops. I think it loops. The world is round after all. Yeah. yeah. Like presumably you will eventually get to Carre or Care or whatever. Carre. I think. What do you think, Beach? I think, think we go. Well, actually, let's try West. Yeah, because it's a weird way to it's go. It's a weird way to go, and it, I think it's funny. Okay. 
wow, did you know the Earth is actually round and you end up in Kakabad? <laughs> oh, wow, your journey's over. Congratulations. You're so sick at this game. And then your character dabs. <laughs> so Eventually. You're going west? Yeah. Because we either, we either loop or we go into the sub-ocean. Oh, no. We just clip into the wall and die. Like, <laughs> what the? <laughs> what is that art? Mm. I don't have that art. We were on this page once before. Damn, that cat looks comfy. Sir, is your cat okay? It looks sick. <laughs> it's just sad. Yeah, it's just really depressed. <laughs> Eventually, the path peters out, and ahead of you is a wood. A signpost reading, To Aliana, points into the wood. Will you set off into the woods, or return to the junction and continue heading northwards as you were before. We don't have any map, so we have no idea where this is going. I don't think this is the way to go. But let's keep going this way. All right, let's yeah, see. let's do it. I want to see what's in the woods. You press on through the wood and soon come across another path which crosses it. You follow this path northwards until you come to a junction. The signpost at the junction points westwards to Aliana and straight on to Dumpus. Oh. oh. Oh, wait, okay. where did we you, end up? You haven't traveled as far as you thought you had, I think. Yeah. I guess maybe? Yeah, I think that might be the case. Well, you head to Aliana or Dumpus. Dumpus? Wait, where's Aliana then? It's not even on the map. It's not even on the map. Yeah. Dumpus is a metropolis. But, I mean... Is it on any, any of the maps? I mean, the some of them don't even have... Yeah, this one has way more... Like an unreadable map. Yeah. Holy. Do you see Aliana on there anywhere, Paul? No. No, I don't see it. Well, judging from that map, Dumpus is like further up. And then if we want to keep moving through the hills. Yeah, I think we go to Dumpus. Yeah, also, I think it's so. a very funny name. I agree. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> All right, Dumpus it is, 54. Yeah, it's like, which way do we go to be able to say Dumpus more? <laughs> Excuse me, Cobbler. Is this Dumpus? <laughs> yes. yes. It's like every time they name like any town Butte. Yeah. <laughs> it's like in Saskatchewan, there's a town called Central Butte. Right. Central Butt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is Butt, Montana. Yeah. Who decided to name it Climax? That's what I want to know. You follow the path for the rest of the afternoon until you stand on a hilltop. The path runs down a hill into a small village set on a river, and you follow it down. Turn to 176. Some of these et passage entries are so such pointless busy work. Yeah. It's... It's when they make you like chain, like chain multiple things together without any decisions. It's always kind of odd. It's like, why not just? Why couldn't this have been one paragraph? Yeah. yeah. As you follow the path downwards, you pass a sign. You are entering the village of Dumpus. Will you find an inn to rest for the night, or try to make contact with the villagers? Like, wow! You literally just woke up. Yeah. <laughs> right. We're gonna make contact with the village. Yeah, let's do 34. it. Yeah, we just woke up. There's no way we need to go to bed. Already. Our characters is looking for excuses to eat and sleep. <laughs> He's on a food tour. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just want to travel and eat. Yeah. Try the local cuisine. Yeah. Listen, Listen here, Jamie Oliver. Please make me some skunk bear soup, Jamie. <laughs> oh, you can't? Yeah. You pass along the main path through the village and stop outside a hut where several hill dwellers are sitting and eating. They are deep in discussion about something. Will you introduce yourself or ignore them and continue? Wow. 86? Yeah. I would like to introduce myself. I would like to think that I can get along with most anybody. <laughs> Just, I'm Otaku Jeff! Yeah. They're like, we, whoa, why, oh, hey. what's with that dude? <laughs> yeah. They stop and look at you. They invite you over, but become agitated at the sight of your weapon. You may leave your weapon and join them, or thank them for their offer of hospitality and press on. Well, I mean, we'll just drop a weapon. We got yeah, spells. That's fine. Yeah, yeah they, exactly. they don't know. You, the, you, yeah. the true danger is your spells. They don't know that we are just a fucking gun. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, that's essentially what a wizard is, right? Yeah, it's you're true. just a gun. Walking gun, yeah. You're a walking gun. I mean, you're maybe like one of those like really old fashioned like flintlock pistols that like sometimes doesn't fire quite right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, you're kind of a gun if, like, a couple hundred people, every time you wanted to do anything, had to vote on what you <laughs> before you could do anything. Right. Yeah. Be happy we're giving you a vote on guns. Imagine what that must be like. Mmm. Fuck, I'm tired. Yeah. <laughs> 
Maybe I should go to sleep. 185! <laughs> go to sleep, or I'll put you to sleep. Mm -hmm. Okay, you sit and talk to them. They seem to be amongst the senior members of the Village Society, and this has been a lucky encounter. Add two luck points. Does it go above? I'm going to say yes. Yeah, it does. Sure does. 14 luck, baby. I mean, to get it to go above that number, you have to be pretty lucky. Yeah. But mm -hmm. then again. My nickname is Otaku Luck. <laughs> they offer you food, which you may eat and gain one stamina point. Yes. Yeah. 22. As the conversation becomes lighter, you jokingly refer to the buffoons at Cristatanti, a comment which does not go down well with one of the hosts who happens to be from the village. Oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> oh, man. You always play to the crowd, and it's like, no, you fucked up. Yeah. Ne never do that. Wow, that joke didn't land. So Cristatanti was where we were. Yeah. Yeah, because we went from Contapati to Cristatanti, and now we're at Dumpus. Yeah. Okay. In anger, he rises and challenges you. As you were on his own territory, this would not be a wise challenge to accept, so you back off. He chases you angrily through Dumpus as you flee before him. Aww. On the edge of the village, he gives up the chase and you may head onwards, but you realize with the dismay that you have left your weapon, weapon behind. Yep. You must now continue weaponless and, unless you have a reserve in your pack, you must deduct four skill points until you find another weapon Turn to 14. Well, got these it's like we're only casting spells for now. We've got these kicking boots, though. <laughs> yeah, we got these wow. Barante skin boots or whatever. Mm. Wow, we hey. just got chased by a hillman through the wood, like through <laughs> and the that, village. It's always the thing where it's like, do you want to do this? 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 And then you have no decision. You just insulted the guy for no reason. Yeah. And you're going to run away. And it's like, you just did a whole bunch of stuff that you didn't have any choice in. Yeah. Yep. At least right. they give you a benefit, right? You're like, oh, you get, you get some of this. Yeah. Turn to 14. Outside the village, you climb up into the woods. You find a suitable sheltered spot not far from another path. Will you camp for the night or continue through the night? Probably camp, I guess. I guess we camp. Short day, yeah. 108. That is a short day. You know what? Dear Remember diary, I, I walked from one village to another through a, a wood following a path, and then I insulted an idiot, <laughs> and he got angry. And I left my sword behind, which means I think I'm the idiot? Yeah, which means we're all idiots. Yeah. Uh, okay, don't be mad, but I left my sword in, in <laughs> Dumpus. Like, why would your diary be mad? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just letting them know. Don't yeah. be mad. Don't be mad. It's like, a, it's an old folk song. I left my sword in, in Dumpus. Dumpus. <laughs> I left my sword in Dumpus. <laughs> I left my girl in anal land. <laughs> All right, uh, you settle down to sleep. There's night creatures. Oh, of course there are. Uh, you may add two points to the die roll. You will have to make as night creatures are less likely to approach a camp. So 123 is the list. And then we got to roll that. Six. Nice. Nothing. Good job. Thanks. It was very skill intensive. You know? Uh, you may set off again the next morning. If you have had a peaceful night's sleep, add two stamina points. Man, we are just racking. We're back to 24 stamina. Wow. By the way. Yeah, they give, they, I mean, they're kind of like, from a game design standpoint, they are obligated to throw stamina at you because they make yeah. you cast a bunch. Well, they don't make you, but. But you're going to you have to do, to do, do those thing, things. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, I, I like, it's like, man, I've been getting better sleep on this quest than I ever got at <laughs> yeah. home. This is like. You know, well rested, well fed. This mm -hmm. is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, blah blah blah. Uh, you follow a path onwards, which climbs steadily up a hill. Turn to thirty-six. I don't feel like we're gonna beat this one tonight. No. Oh. Did you eat it all yesterday? If not, you must lose three stamina. Continue to turn one forty-seven. You totally. Why ate. not just put that in the same at the beginning of the? Yeah. You know your well, same it's, entry. It's, it's like this could funnel in from somewhere else as well, I guess. I guess, yeah, 147. Yeah, that's true, I guess. That's a good point. 147. Mm, let's put that right there. That's good. The gentle upward slope becomes a steep climb, and you must rest several times during the morning. Finally, you reach the top and can look over the hill to see that the path leads into a small settlement of crudely made huts. You follow the path down and into the village. As you arrive, the villagers notice you and make for their huts almost as if in fear. They are a sorry-looking bunch. Well, 
All right. God, so judgmental. Yeah, they're a story looking bunch, short and squat with tough leather, leathery skin. <laughs> like they live outside and have to work. They... <laughs> Not me, though. I live inside and I, I go on quests. <laughs> they look like Danny DeVito. <laughs> Several of them are missing limbs. And some are only able to drag themselves along with their hands. Jesus Christ. Well, we should do something. Wow. There's three Look guys who didn't even have heads. A lot of... It's just, a, it's just one guy who's a head with legs. <laughs> yeah. Not even a torso. Strapped onto either side of his ears and he the walks Danny along. The village. <laughs> Will you try to talk to the villagers or continue onwards through the village? Yeah, I'll try to talk to them, right? It went so well last time. Yeah. yeah like, maybe I'll just try to land the Christatanti joke again. Maybe, <laughs> maybe they're very erudite. Like, we don't know. Well, you just, it's the thing where you, like, you know, you, 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 when you go to a new town, you, like, figure out what, what place everyone hates. You know, it's like, yeah. who's your sports rival? Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. So, you know who sucks? The Yankees. And they're like, yeah, the Yankees <laughs> do suck. But then you do that you do that same joke like in the wrong place and yeah. everyone that's when you get chased out without your sword. You do that one in Yonkers, New York. Nobody wants to hear that. No. Don't you knock me. at the door of one of the huts. There is no reply. You may enter anyway or try another hut. I don't think breaking and entering is the key to winning no, over these no, people. No, you're right. Yeah. I'll try another one. 271. Okay. What if somebody inside is like is suffering though? I mean, all these people sound like they're suffering. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they're missing limbs. Mm -hmm. You try knocking on another door. This time a voice calls out. Who is it? And you enter. <laughs> <laughs> you don't announce yourself. No. no. Turn to 158. It's me, Link. It's ha, me, Link. Ha, 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 yeah. Say ya. <laughs> Inside, the hut has no furniture. A small fire burns in the middle of the floor, and against the far wall stands a family of three, cowering away from you. Will you hold out your hand in friendship, or cast a spell? What? <laughs> well, Twitch chat, what are we going to do, huh? Yeah, let's leave it to them. Yeah. Te technically, uh, I, only, I only can have five options, yep. so they can't have the don't cast the spell option. Mm -mm. <laughs> we have one choice, we're going to cast a spell. You got Gal, Foff, Ran, Fam. Doc. Ooh, fam. Fam. Is fam could be good. I don't yeah. want to, I don't, I really yeah, don't want to yeah. influence the vote. Don't. But. Oh. We could FOF end a turn, you lose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I don't know if some, maybe the, some of the spells are like, be, give, give them a party. Yeah. Adam is an influencer. It's true. <laughs> These glasses. <laughs> but it's like, oh. will you hand out, will you hold out your hand in friendship or cast a spell, right? So it's like, put forward as an alternative to friendship. <laughs> yeah. I like how, <laughs> it's like, you could have just like shook their hand, but yeah, you decided against, you're like, you know what, I'm just going to let the, the arcane just, I'm going <laughs> to grip it and rip it on this, you know? <laughs> that's, that's the solution. <laughs> So Let's see, we come to a village. We knock at a door, no answer. We're right. like, all right, try the next one. Who is it? Walk in, just fucking <laughs> bam. Kick the door down. <laughs> just be like, look at my boots. Well, <laughs> Zap. Uh, fam wins. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. 413, huh? What could possibly happen? Oh, this is, I kind of like this a lot. Deduct five stamina points. There's no such spell as this. All right, oh. what was number two? We're back down to 19 stamina. Number two was Doc. Doc, 299. All right. Do we, hang on, wait. Do yeah. we, who is it? Kick down the door, walk in, they're cowering, and then we wave our hands a bunch and fall over dead. <laughs> <laughs> is that what we're in for? We don't fall over dead. We do that thing in Indiana Jones where you drink from the wrong cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just slowly <laughs> desiccate into a skeleton. Just really traumatize these people, you know? <laughs> they, they go for a backpack and like, hey, nice boots. <laughs> yeah. Wow, look at these boots. <laughs> Damn, I don't have any legs. <laughs> <laughs> it's the gift of the Magi. Yeah. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Good Mom. Good story. All right. Deduct one stamina point. Get back to oh, God, it did something. Yeah, oh, no. It sure did. Oh, no. 
Do you have any blimberry juice with you? If not, you must return to 158 and choose again. Okay, we have no blueberry juice. Wow. All right, Paul, what was number three? I said like gummy berry juice. Oh, man, it looks like that would have been good, too. Yeah. Uh, number three... Oh, wait, the thing's disappeared off the... Uh-oh. One sec. Uh, number up... three was FOF. Okay, you're making up juices at this point, yeah. Get Blim fucked. You have any blueberry juice? juice. <laughs> 431. I Please literally tore down a hive with my bare hands and cut it open. Stamina points. <laughs> okay, this one's good. Okay, okay. Deduct four stamina points. Uh-huh. We're at 14. Wow, we remember when we were cawing about how we were at 24 health again? We're right. We're at 14. You cast the spell and a protective force field surrounds your body. <laughs> Great. You may turn to 79, but no harm will befall you, as there will be no contact between you and any of the villagers. Oh, I see. We're like, no, don't don't come any closer. Here, let me put on my protective shield. Yeah. Great. I like a kick in the door. Wow. And then, bwam, a big thing. They're like, and then you just leave. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. 79. Well, now we can start killing people because nothing can hurt us. Mm -hmm. The man shuffles over and shakes your hand. Through the field? Are you magical, stranger? He asks, are you not afraid of us? Or perhaps, it's just turning Eastern European, or perhaps you are a healer who can cure us of this plague. Oh, no. At his last word, you spring back, but it is too late. You have made contact with a plague carrier and from now onwards, you will lose three stamina points each day until either you die or you find someone that can cure you of the plague. Sweet! Holy doodle. That would have been bad. <laughs> wow, this... Now that you've returned, I'm it's... gonna argue... Okay. Yeah. Flavor Judge. We had a force field up. Yeah. Well, no, right? well, that, that's, that's what it's saying. Like, it, the previous page said you have a force field, so you don't need to worry about it. Oh, okay. Like the previous page said, go to seventy nine, but ignore the damage because right, you, you can you can interact with the villagers with no fear. Yeah, that's what that meant. Okay, yeah, that's cool. I'm gonna argue that we're bubbled. Yeah, we're no, yeah, bubbled. It, yeah, that's 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 how like yeah. it said well, it. I mean, it said it on the previous page. Okay, Paul. Good point. <laughs> All right. Too bad you didn't have the blimberries though. I wonder yeah. where you, I wonder where you get those. Yeah. I wonder where you get the blimberries from. <laughs> you could have you could have healed them and they'd be all nice. Maybe we have to like forage. What page was the Blimberries? Does anybody remember? The well, that that spell. Yeah. I mean, I can, you can go back. Yeah, I want to see. I just kind of want to see. Actually, I'm curious. Uh, that one was. Uh, Thank you. Two ninety nine. Is this a kissing book? Could be. Mm. <laughs> two ninety nine. Yeah. I kind of want to see what happened if we had the Blimberry juice. Yeah. I'm sure everybody's very. Usually I don't do this kind of stuff, but uh, if you can cast a spell over Blimberry Juice, you do so and sprinkle the enchanted juice on all the villagers. This is vaguely erotic. Nice. At first, this appears to burn them, but then the healing potion takes effect. This is a plague village. Everyone in it has plague. <laughs> <laughs> you have just healed this family, and they are on their knees thanking you. You talk to them for some time, and they give you one important warning. Beware the black lotus flower. Eventually you leave. That's it. We cured the uh, plague and they're like, yeah, look out for this flower. I'm yep. like, sick, thanks. Yeah, we know that you guys are kind of susceptible to black lotuses, but you don't want this one. Yeah. 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 Got paid in exposure, Be baby. Mm -hmm. Beware the black lotus. It's it's just, it's not, it's too expensive. It's just wow. not worth it. What a ripoff. So I'm guessing maybe we could go find the the blimberries even at this point, perhaps? Who knows? Well, I mean... So presumably at some point, there'll be a thing like, do you pick the Black Lotus or not? And you can yeah. be like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I mean, second. yeah, knowing knowing us now, we have to be like, like, because in character, we yeah. wouldn't know this information now. This? Yeah. I would metagame the shit out of it. That's here. fair. I'm here to gain beat. Yeah, do it. Life is too short to not pick top tiers. <laughs> Agreed, okay? yeah. Right? Yeah. Just pick the best, get over it, Get some W's. Yeah. Yeah. Win, win, win. Win, win, win. All right. 220? Actually, let's take our break.
Yeah, good idea. We can leave this village of plague because mm -hmm. these people have the plague. Yeah, pick the grappler. And now that you've returned, all right, it's gamers. My duty. Uh, we're gonna take our our second legally obligated break. So we'll be back in three minutes. Get up and stretch. Hello, and welcome back to Beaches. <laughs> Beaches. A big relaxing. Mm -hmm. Oh man, you almost look comfy. checked out. Yeah, yeah that's, this is perfect for you. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody. Uh, we just well, we didn't just save a village of plague from the plague. We just put a force field around ourselves, ourselves and said, "Don't touch me." Yeah, and we left. <laughs> <laughs> so really, I mean, we're the hero. I Operating guess. is and, intended. Yeah. yeah. All right. Ooh, the plague. It's bam, don't touch but, me. Good luck, I yeah, guess. Good luck, I guess. My prognosis good luck is for you. I mean, congratulations luck. that happened, or I'm sorry, I don't know which one, but I'm not reading all of this. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we're leaving the village. One sec. So that's uh, 220? 220, baby. Some way down the hill, you stop for a rest. You sit on a boulder to survey what lies ahead. The path leads downwards into a vale. Cradled between three hills is a village, and a quite a large one at that. This this whole adventure is just from one village to the next. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. The sun is falling rapidly, and you decide to head downwards towards the settlement. An overhanging branch touches your face, and you hear a lively chirping. Hovering by your shoulder is a small creature the size of your thumb. Mm. It is childlike but very thin, with green skin, and it flits around you on transparent wings. It seems to be quite friendly and alights on your shoulder. You may talk to it, or get rid of it with a spell. <laughs> I'm gonna talk to it, because I do not want to just like zap, and just like pull, yeah. like pull out our magic gun and blast this thing off our shoulder. Like, get off me, pixie. Hey, Tinkerbell, how about you fucking take your Tonka truck and kick rocks? <laughs> 171. Uh, this creature is a mini mite, ah. and it calls itself Jan. That's my mom's name. It is very friendly and tells you you are looking down on Biratanti. Oh well, we're now we're in Biratanti. We're looking yeah. down at Biratanti. There you go. Yeah. Uh. The largest village is in the Shamatanti Hills. Biratanti is a friendly village where all travelers spend at least one night. Consequently, prices are a little on the high side. The Minimite would like to come with you. Will you allow it to stay on your shoulder and follow the path down into Biratanti, or will you tell it you would rather travel alone? Well, I would be, I should just let it come with me, right? I mean, yeah, like awesome little pixie friend. Yeah, sure. 111. Hey, listen. 111? 111. There seems to be a good deal of merriment in the village. Uh, it is the festival of the young, whispers Jan. Once a year, the children are allowed the freedom of the village. It such, is a time such of... Such a deep voice yeah. and such a little body. It's amazing. It is a time of great fun and pranks. A number of children sit in the street ahead drinking ale. <laughs> Hold up. The kids are boozing? Hey, it is a place of merriment, you yeah. know. A Maybe little like, too much, it seems. The water might not be any good. Yeah. Yeah. As they're laughing loudly. Ooh, don't drink the water. Woo! <laughs> Ahead, a young boy holds an old woman over his knee and is spanking her. What the fuck is going on here? Is this Gamora? Yeah. yeah. A group of boys is fighting outside a hut with a sign that reads, Glen Dragon's Tavern. A group of girls are sta is standing at a signpost pointing to the crystal waterfall tripping up their elders as they pass and giggling to each other. This is a village of bullies. Hey, hey, watch me trip this old guy. Yeah. Would you like to avoid this festival and make for the inn, or visit the tavern, or head for the crystal waterfall, or leave town straight away? We should probably just leave. There is no way that any of this ends well for us. But I would like to check out the crystal waterfall. 102. Plus, it's not very far away from where we are. Uh, you travel along a path leading upwards a little way until you reach a large natural waterfall. The only path to it leads past a small hut where a ruffian is collecting money. 
It seems that the price to pay for visiting this waterfall is three gold pieces. What the fuck do you mean three gold pieces? It is a beautiful sight with large crystal stalactites hanging from the rocks all the way down. Will you pay the price and visit the waterfall or return to the village and head to the inn or onwards out of town? Well, we could. Three gold's a lot of gold. It better be a pretty good waterfall for three gold. I'm gonna I'm gonna pay for it. So we're down to eight gold. Always doing the touristy things. Yeah, I have to, right? I'm only here once. Two oh four. Don't kill me, 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 don't kill me. The ruffian takes your three gold pieces and hands you a piece of cloth to use as a towel. Uh, along with two other villagers and of course Jan the Minimite you take off your clothes and bathe in the waterfall you begin to glow and the cool water is not only refreshing but also invigorating you are bathing in a waterfall with magical healing properties you may restore your skill, stamina and luck scores to their initial values for washing away your wounds the waterfall will also cure you of any disease you may have picked up but, but not curses so we could have mm. cured the plague Maybe we should. Do you think we should head back to that village and let them know that? Yeah, it's, hey, like, it's like literally like an hour down the road. There's a thing that will cure you guys. Yeah. It's like, wow, how do we clear our plague? By throwing money at it. We don't have any money. Well, then good luck with the plague. <laughs> oh, man. Then you must return to the village where you pass the inn, turn to 92. So we're back up to full health, which is actually sick for us. Back up to 24. Now, if our luck, since our luck was at 14, does it go back to 12? I mean, I I mean, I don't know if I was actually supposed to be able to get up to 14. Probably not. Let's just put it at 12. Because strictly speaking, you're supposed to roll 2d6 and see if you got below. So Yeah, but your luck always goes down, right? Right. So you get like two free kicks at the can. Just it's for... true. It's true. But it's probably too good for it to go above 12. All right. It does say you may restore, so I guess you could not if you wanted to. 92. Uh, the inn is not cheap. A bed for the night is five gold pieces, oh, wow. and a meal is four. Ugh. If you eat, pay the price and add two stamina points. If you want to sleep here, turn to 55. If not, you'd better leave the village and find a place to bed down, turn to 21. I'm out of here. I'm not paying nine gold. Yeah. I only got eight gold pieces left. Yeah. I shouldn't have spent all my money at that waterfall. <laughs> wow, this is all my fault. All right. Beige is asleep, but even when asleep, uh, fiscal irresponsibility. <laughs> <laughs> you can't help but answer yeah. it. Yeah. You find a quiet place to rest outside the village. Away from the hustle of the Festival of Youth, you are able to get a good night's sleep. The mini mic curls up near you. You may eat provisions before you go to sleep and add two stamina points. One if you've already eaten. Add three stamina points for rest. Yeah, I guess we'll eat because we're going to... So we'll yeah, go down to four good. meals. And then we gain five stamina. So we're back up to... We're at 29. Yeah, you're... <sighs> You're getting a lot of healing. And they stuff. really do just throw stamina. This one, more than the other ones, have they thrown stamina at? Uh, turn to 67. You rise early and leave soon after dawn with Jan still hovering around your head as you set off. Did you eat? Yes, we did. There are two paths ahead. One uphill for the to the east and one downhill to the west. Uh, we're going east, I think. 135. You travel along the path for some time. Passing out, uh, passing out of, the, of a shrubby woodland, a pleasant smell hits your nostrils. Off to the right is a field of beautiful black flowers. Uh-oh. Mm. The path through the field leads on over the brow of the hill into a valley below. Jan believes this is the quickest path to Torapani, the next village on your route. If you don't trust his judgment, you may use a spell. You may continue onwards. Alternatively, you may re retrace your steps and take the other route downhill from Britani Biratani. So, Dan hasn't given us a reason not to trust them, you know? 
So, we're not going to cast a spell this time. I think we're just going to continue on. 73. Seventy-three. The smell gets sweeter as you pass on through the fields of black lotus flowers. You feel lightheaded. Oh, we should have avoided. Didn't they just tell us to avoid this? Uh, or not touch them? Yeah, he said watch out for them. Oh. <laughs> well, we're now we're walking through a full field full of them. You feel lightheaded as you continue, and you start to skip and jump with merriment. Jan, still on your shoulder? is still on your shoulder, is likewise full of glee. Your head swims. Before you can stop yourself, you are feeling dizzy and falling to the ground. You fall into the flowers on this on... You fall into the flowers onto something hard. A surge of horror passes through you as you realize it is a skeleton! But the horror is short-lived as you lose your consciousness. The sweet aroma... Oh my god. The sweet aroma of the black lotus is a deadly poison and you have breathed your last. You will rest forever in the fields of the black death. Wow. Just as you were like, wow, this is being really nice to us. Yeah. That was harsh. All right, what was the last entry we were at? Uh, let's go back to 135. Okay. All right, Twitch chat, we're casting turns, a spell. Turns out Jan is dumb. Yeah. <laughs> we're casting a spell. Jan doesn't, Jan doesn't know what the hell they're talking about. No, Jan has no idea. So let's cast a spell. So we can either do Fifth, Sud, Huff, Mag, Sus. Choose wisely. We got to get to this field. Strictly speaking, you know which way to go, right? Like the other way. Yeah, like the way the one way kills you, so presumably the other way is the way to go. You yeah. don't really you don't really need to cast a spell to let you know which way to go. But I will say that maybe the spell will help us get through the field. East is the way we have to go, right? Sus is winning currently. <laughs> My sweet baby boy. Uh, I'm assuming Sus is going to win. Yeah, it looks like Sus is going to win. All right, 394. 394. Deduct two stamina points. Good sign, because that means it's an actual spell. You cast your spell, but nothing happens. <laughs> Son of a bitch. So we don't know. So that was a real spell, but we don't know what it does. Yeah. The Minimite tells you not to waste your energy on spells while he is around. Will you continue or return and take the other path? Well, we guess we're turning around and taking the other path. So we go down to 27. Maybe might really wants you to die, apparently. Yeah. 51. You travel downhill along the valley for an hour, but then the path turns uphill again. The hill you are now climbing is not too steep, and as noon approaches, you are again on a descending path. You may stop and eat provisions, if you wish, and may add two stamina points. Uh, mm, give you two. No, I don't think so. Further along the path in the afternoon, Jan, who has been chatteringly, chattering incessantly to you, wants you to stop. You are being watched. As you are now in a wood, you proceed cautiously. Suddenly, the bushes part and a figure steps forward. Dressed in black, this tall man bars your way. Will you return? Will you prepare to do battle or try to talk with him? Do you see the art? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there we go. There we go. What's you your art? What's your art? art looks like that. Oh, it's um, yeah, similar. We got basically, so it's some sort of ninja. Yeah, it's a ninja. We found a ninja. I'll try talking to them. There's no way this ends badly. 103. The stranger ignores your words and grips a sharp scimitar. Turn to 117. Okay. Well, that answers that. You prepare to fight the tall assassin. Or we can cast a spell. Well, considering you don't have a weapon right Yeah, now. I don't have a weapon, so... All right, Twitch chat. Mug, walk, zap, kill, fix. Uh, 
I mean, we All know right. what Zap does. So we know what Zap does. Uh, yeah. But maybe there's something. So one of the things yeah. that they talk about is that some of the easier ones, like Zap, uh, might work, but they cost a lot of stamina. Yeah. Whereas, like, trying, you know, doing a different spell. Uh, that's a more that's a more uh um narrow use case uh might also work and cost you less stamina so yeah tomorrow canada day it is looks like mug is currently winning really tomorrow is in fact canada day wow maybe i should take tomorrow off the day of Canada, July 1st. You know what? That's not a bad idea. Saturday is going to be a long day. It is. Mug wins. All right. Mug wins, huh? Mug always wins. 368. 368. Oh, no. Deduct five stamina points. You cast a spell and wait for something to happen, but nothing does. So that so it is a mug is a spell, it's just not a spell that does anything right now. Yeah, what's up? What's what was number two? Zap. Oh, okay. We know what that one does. Three oh five. Good choice, Twitch chat. We're gonna shoot him with lightning. Deduct four stamina points. Wow, that's this is just going swimmingly. We're back down to eighteen. Uh, you cast your spell and wait for the lightning bolt to shoot at the assassin, but nothing happens. The mini mites screams at you. Don't waste your time on spells. Mini mites are protected, though it is sometimes a curse with a protection aura. You cannot cast spells when I'm about. Oh my god, you have got to be kidding me. You couldn't have mentioned this like one of the other times you cast tried to cast a spell. <laughs> oh man, I can't believe we got suckered. You must return to 117 and fight the assassin. Okay, you know what? I'm Is the gonna... mini mic going to help fight the assassin? No, but executive decision. We win. Look at that. Huh? Because I think we would die. We have no weapon. We're deducting four from our attack, so we have a two skill, basically. So we have the option here. If you fight and win 153, alternatively, if he's at three stamina or less... Uh, and your own stamina is at least six, you can spare his life. 187. So, we have to get rid of Jan. <laughs> we literally can't do anything. We have no weapon. We can't cast spells. That's it. But, so, so you know, you beat this guy. Yeah. But do you want to, do you, you want to spare his life or not? Sure. 187? 187. Let it let it be known that Adam Savadan shows mercy sometimes. He begs for mercy, and when you step back from the battle, he is overwhelmingly grateful. Picking himself up and nursing his wounds, he tells you he is flanker, an assassin and thief. He always picks on wayfarers for combat practice and thought you would be no match. Like, you looked like a sissy. So <laughs> you looked like you would fall down like wet cardboard. Yeah. What could I say? <laughs> I looked like an easy W. Okay? Yeah. I'm yeah. just letting you know right now. Uh, he too is headed for care. And in return for your mercy, he promises he will remain your friend. This will be a valuable asset in the city port. When you reach care, you will meet Flanker again and he promises he will aid you. Turn to reference 79 in the second sorcery adventure to find out how he will help. He will not accompany you to care and instead disappears into the woods. You have made a valuable contact here. Add two luck points and continue turning. Uh, continue by turning to 212. So I guess we have to write down like... Yeah, maybe write, write that down. I guess we don't actually have that book right now. Yeah. But... Page 79, second sword. There we go. Yeah, maybe we could be like, hey, can we have your sword? <laughs> right? We kind of left ours a few places back. Yeah, we need uh, we need some help here. I love it's like you just defeated the ninja and 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 uh uh gave you know 
you defeated the ninja, but you're like, no, I, I'll I'll give you your life. Can I have your sword though? Because uh, like three villages back, this old guy chased me out of town and took my sword. Yeah. Like, please, I need something here. It's like, I can't give you my sword. Then who am I going to fight in the woods? <laughs> you know? Uh, 212. God bless. Okay, continuing along the path and round the side of a hill, you are now becoming increasingly irritated by the Minimites chattering. Yeah. You, <laughs> you come across a small wooden hut where an old woman sits in the front step. As you pass, she calls out to you, inviting you over. Will you see what she wants, or ignore her and continue? Like everybody that we've talked to, it has ended poorly. We got a mini mite. No. We tried to talk to a little man, chased us out of town, lost our weapon. Some of the, the no, there's a couple. Like the the beggar went well. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. The. <laughs> what what I find really interesting though is that like you had the option to take mini mite with you or not. Yeah. Right. Which means that there must be alternate versions of like every single one of these entries that doesn't talk about Mini Might. That's actually impressive. Yeah. Huh. All right. Uh... Yeah, I guess we'll talk to her. Jeez, this isn't going to end well. 243. That's a good point. Maybe it's an illusion of choice thing. Maybe if you don't take him with him, he's like, I'll come with you anyway. Yeah. The old woman invites you into her house and bids you sit down. She is lonely on her own in the woods and appreciates the company of others. Uh -oh. Offering, <laughs> offering you a drink, she shuffles off into the kitchen and returns with two large cups of tea and one tiny one. Jan is a little suspicious and tells you so. The old woman glares at him and expresses openly her disgust for mini mites. Uh, disgust for mini mites. She has forgotten the pot and returns to the kitchen to fetch it. You may, if you wish. Switch your cup of tea with hers, or you may wait for her to return and drink the one she has given you. This is Princess Pride. <laughs> it really, yeah, it's like never bet against a Sicilian when death is on the line. If she is like a witch or something, then Mini Mike being with you could actually be super good. Yeah, because no one can cast spells. There's art too. Can you see it? I got art. Oh, nice. Uh, let's see. All right, here we go. Yeah, it's pretty much the same. All right, well, does she look trustworthy? Would you drink tea from this woman? But like, if if the tea is fine, then you're just theoretically it shouldn't matter if you swap the glasses, right? Can we? Yeah. If you swap the cups, it shouldn't matter. All right. Well, unless you know, unless we are we are into the princess bride, unless she poisoned her own cup, assuming <laughs> that you would switch the cups. Yeah. How far ahead is she thinking? I'm going to drink the one she gave me. 146. There's, oh. She hates mini mites. I want to get rid of my mini mite. So trusting. Yeah. The tea is refreshing, and you may add one stamina point. Also, add one luck point for making the right choice. Oh. oh. Yeah. Oh. Would you look at that? Trust little old ladies offering you tea. Yeah. <laughs> you notice that the woman is cursing, and her actions are becoming slower. She creeps slowly off into the kitchen, and you see her gulping down another drink. Then she comes back and questions you about your journey. She did poison her own drink. <laughs> no way she poisoned her own drink. <laughs> Holy crap. No way. She is particularly interested in knowing whether you came across an old man. If you have with you a page from a spell book, turn to 184. If not, turn to 219. You do. The old man in the tree gave you a page from a spell book. Oh, shoot. Yeah, we did. Okay, 184. It takes a lot of guts to, like, just invite a random person in yeah. and then poison your own drink, assuming that every every person you meet will switch, switch glasses on you. Yeah, you just, I mean, maybe the only way she feels alive is live if she's gambling. I mean, she's yeah. got the antidote, I guess, so it's not so bad. Mm-hmm. You describe the old man you encountered and her eyes light up. She asks whether you stole from him a page from a spell book and is overjoyed as you pull the, the page from your pack. Giggling with glee, she snatches it from you. Turn to 114. Or no, one, sorry. Is that 114? Yeah, 114. Yeah, kind of looks like a seven a little bit. 
Four days ago, I was visited by a traveler such as yourself, she explains. The rogue was leafing through my book when I caught him, and as I challenged him, he raced off, taking the page with him. He must have been a wizard of some power, considering the speed with which he vanished. I cast an aging spell on him, but it seemed to do no good. She thanks you for bringing it back and offers to show you how useful it is. She will rid you of the Minimite Pest if you wish. If you want to get rid of Jan and regain the ability to use spells, add together the page number you have with the number on which on what must be the next page and turn to that reference number. If you have not recorded the page number or if you wish to keep Jan, she allows you to leave and set off again along the path. Turn okay. to 232. But that was like, it, it said what page number of the book it was. Did it? Uh, yeah, what what the page of the thing was? Does anyone remember? I think one oh two seems familiar to me, but uh, yeah, I think it was one. I think it was one oh two. So, if you want to get rid of Jan, add together the page number you have with the number on what must be the next page. So, if we have one oh two, we just add one oh three, and it's two oh five. I guess is that God. I guess we'll look at 205, right? It's like the ogre destroys you. Wait, no. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're right. Boom! Squealing loudly, the mini mite disappears from your shoulder. You're relieved to find that you will be able to make use of your magic once more. The old woman allows you to leave, and you continue along your path to turn to 232. Wow, that's just... Like, they could have just said, like, double the number or something. Like, why? It, it seemed like... like un that's a weird way to word it. Yeah. yeah. Take 102, add the next highest number, and then go to that entry. It's like double it and add one. How about just that? Why not just like let the old lady get rid of the mini mite for free because I got her page back? Or maybe like there was never an option to be like, hey Jan, could you leave? Like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> is there was it a thing that we needed a spell to make Jan leave? Can you please go away? Yeah. You're really cramping my style. I can't cast like, spells. That's, Talk about passive aggressive. It's like I'm not gonna ask you to leave. I'm just gonna cast the spell that makes you leave. Yeah. Yeah, this is like someone in Twitch chat said this sounds like old time gamey manual copy protection. Mm. It's like, oh man, I really want to play Loom, but I don't have my my game my wheel, my key wheel, you know? They make you answer the password every time you want to play. It is now late afternoon. You pass over the brow of the next hill, and below you is a village. Gee, this book is just literally villages. Yeah, yeah. The path leads you to into this village, and you have little choice but to enter Torapani. Torapani is inhabited by Sfins, an aggressive-looking race of man-orcs. But as you enter the village, an air of depression hanging over the place becomes quite apparent. Yeah. The Sfins take no notice of you, and you sit down on a tree stump in the center of the village, surveying the miserable creatures. Will you head for the inn to spend the night or attempt to make contact with the villagers? Wow. Oh, the only thing worse than man orcs is depressed man orcs. Yeah, that's true, actually. Half the village is man orcs and the other half of the village is orc men. <laughs> <laughs> it's like star belly sneeches and normal sneeches. Uh, yeah. Why are you so sad? We don't have top, stars in our bellies. Top half orc versus bottom half orc. <laughs> You'd rather be bottom half or top half a sausage, Paul? Wait, what? Like the entire top half is a sausage or yeah. the entire bottom? You still I have mean, like a face if you take top half. Uh, bottom, I think bottom half. Yeah? Bottom half sausage. Why? So my entire bot, your entire body is, so so why sausage? I don't know. Just like the question. Yeah, but then you have like your arms and stuff. You yeah, you still got arms, but you just don't get legs. Yeah. Okay. Given the, op arms the, given the options. Arms are the more important appendage, right? I think so. Yeah. It's a hypothetical, Paul. Uh, but it's like, unlike the like mermaid thing, yeah. you know, turning your legs into a sausage doesn't give you any kind of like other locomotion. No. It's, you're not going to be, you're going to have to have like a wheelchair or something. Yeah, I would just get like a Professor X kind of wheelchair. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going to make contact. 282. I'm going to make contact with the locals. 
Why, why so glum, man orcs? You approach a group of Sphins deep in conversation and take a seat with them. They are discussing a friend, apparently killed in the night by an assassin's blade. Gradually... Oops. You might know that guy. Is the assassin named Flanker? <laughs> Gradually, you work your way into the conversation, and you soon learn the reason for the depression which hangs over the village. The village chief's daughter has been captured by a band of marauders and offered as a sacrifice to a powerful cave demon. According to an ancient prophecy, a dreadful scourge will overrun the village if the chief's line ever ends, and his daughter is the chief's only heir. You tell them of your own travels and the creatures you have met. They realize you are a truly heroic adventurer and become very interested in you. Oh, so you lied. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like your travels have been literally, I went to a bunch yeah. of inns. <laughs> I got chased out of one. I got, I found a mini mite and it made me not be able to cast spells. I lost my weapon. Like uh, you fought an assassin. That was really, and a, you fought a wolf. Yeah. And you vaporized the goblin. That was really the extent of Pretty your shit. Yeah. Suddenly one springs at you while another runs off into the runs off into the village. You are held fast in a vice-like grip, but as you struggle, more spins arrive. They march you off to a hut at the edge of the village turned to 71. Well, what? Oh, well. They're pissed. But You are thrown into the hut and the door is locked. You are their prisoner. You spend half an hour looking for a possible escape, but there does not appear to be one. If you wish to sit down and eat provisions, add two stamina points if this is your first meal today. Then you may either settle down and sleep for the rest of the night, or keep awake and on your guard in case anything should happen. Well, I'm going to eat. It's like, oh no, they threw me in prison. No, yeah, well, might as well eat. Yeah, like why didn't they, they didn't take anything away from you? That's wild. So we're up to 21. <laughs> they were like, they, let's take his sword. Oh, wait, he doesn't have a sword. This is the big adventurer guy? All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, do we want to sleep or stay awake? I think I'm going to try staying awake. That seems the best way out of here. I don't know. Let's ask Beach. What is his opinion about sleeping versus staying awake? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> You remain diligently awake, watching the door, but no one comes during the night. Lose two stamina points for not sleeping and a further three if you do not eat yesterday. So we lost the two that we gained for eating. Oh. Okay. Ears hurt. Turns out being in prison is like the safest place to be. You don't have to worry about night monsters. Yeah, no one can get you. I can't be ambushed by werewolves. I should have just slept. Turn to 222. An hour after daybreak, you hear noises outside. The door opens and five spins come in, followed by an old man with gray hair and colorful robes. He announces himself as Proceus, the spin chief, and apologizes for having captured you. He nods to a menial who brings in bread and milk. You may eat this meal, meal and add two stamina points. Wow, this is a yo-yo of stamina. I thought that said he nods to a millennial for his <laughs> He nods to a millennial who brings in some avocado toast for you. <laughs> don't worry, they don't own a house. Yeah. <laughs> The chief explains that you have a mission of the utmost importance ahead of you. His young daughter, his only heir, has been captured by marauders and is being offered as a sacrifice to a powerful cave demon. Several of his own men have tried to rescue the girl, but so far with no success. We are desperate people, explains the chief. You must be our champion and rescue our heir. If you succeed, you may choose your own reward. I really hope that the daughter didn't get sacrificed in the, like, day that you've kept me in the prison here. yeah <laughs> like you think they would you think they would be a little bit more like get on with it yeah this is why like james, like it's a james bond movie where they should have just like pulled out the gun and shot james bond right mm. instead of giving the monologue it is clear that in spite of the chief's apparent good nature you have little choice in this matter you were taken out of the village and along a meandering path up another hill on the top of the hill is a hole in the ground, and the Sphins prepare a basket to lower you down into what must be a secret entrance to the demon's cave. 
Will you try a last attempt at escaping, or are you thinking only of the rich treasures you may win turn to 100? Well, I mean, I'm not going to try to escape because I think we just die. Mm. So let's go down into the cave. Yeah, you're literally, you're literally being sent down as bait, right? Yeah. You are lowered down through the blackness until eventually you reach the ground below. If you still have Jan the Minimite with you, turn to 286. Otherwise, 197. Well, uh -oh. 197. <laughs> Go 197. Uh, we're going to be like, no, Jan, Jan, why did we ever get rid of you? You peer around in the blackness. The spins throw you down a torch and a tinderbox to light your way. Lighting up the torch, you can see you are in a large cavern. Two passageways lead onwards. Will you take the one on the right or the left? Uh, I'm feeling left, man. 16? 16 it is. I'm actually impressed that Beach fell asleep. <laughs> Brother, he's out. You going on the right? Yeah. 16, right? I said 16? Yeah. The passage, the passage slopes downhill and you soon reach a... Wait, you went left? Okay. Sorry. I said 16, so that's left. I picked it because it was on the right again, but I'm going left. Okay. You keep switching. Yeah. The passage slopes downhill, and you soon reach a fork where you may either go right or turn left. Okay, this time, we'll go left. 151. Some way down the corridor, you hear whimpering, and your torch lights up a frail shape. Hiding in the shadows is the, is the young Sfin girl. Wow, that was easy. Mm. You take her up and comfort her, and she clings to you for safety. Now all you have to do is escape. Turn to 195. Oh, that was hella easy. I hope this is just going to be like, you escape. Done. Yeah. Behind you, a roaring puts you on guard. The walls of the corridor begin to shake and crumble, and you are forced to venture further to avoid the collapse, which is sealing off your exit. Ahead of you now, a narrow shaft of light gives you cause for hope. Perhaps this is another exit? The roaring sound gets louder. As you step from the corridor into a large cavern, suddenly you gasp as you, as you back against the wall, shielding the child from the sight you have seen. Standing before you on four legs is a huge manticore, a hybrid creature with a lion's body and a scorpion's tail. Its face is that of an old man, and as it sees you, it rears back, flapping two great wings. Will you fight the creature, or cast a spell? I have some art for you, too, yeah. Oh, your art's so much better. That just well, looks like a cat. Well, there's also like the you know, the the man. I mean, this is the manticore on the front of the book too, right? <laughs> Yours just looks like a cat. Wow. Cast a spell. So fluffy. There is pep, bag, hop, fof, Dawes. We already know what fof does. Do we? Yeah, it's the shield. Oh, okay. So the question is, it's like, not only do you need to know what the thing does, but sometimes they require special extra things. Yeah. Uh, all right. So far, Dawes is, is winning. Hopefully but that's like sleep, I guess. Doze? Yeah. yeah. Or bulldoze. Maybe a bulldozer comes out of nowhere and just kills it. You invent the bulldozers. <laughs> So let me know when the thing's up. Uh, yeah, it's coming out. It looks like uh, it does look like Dawes is gonna win. All right, Dawes it is. Three twenty-five. Deduct two stamina points. The creature makes a half turn and prepares to swing its stinging tail at you. But as you cast the spell, it pauses briefly and shakes its head as if you'd something had hit it. Its movements become slow. And you now seize your chance to either attack it with your weapon or cast an attacking spell. If you choose to attack, it will fight with a half skill for the first four attack rounds. Do we cast another spell? 364. I'll just pick one. Oh, no, wait. 364 is just no choice. Oh, yeah. Uh, as the Manticore turns to face you, you can cast an attacking spell. Probably hot, right? Uh, yeah. Hot should be fine. Hot means good. I'm going to say hot. 346. Alrighty. 
I mean, there's kill, but who knows what that does. Deduct four stamina points. Your spell creates a large fireball in your hand, which you fling at the beast. It hits the manticore in the side, and the creature roars out of pain. You may turn to 420 to finish it off. Ooh. Okay. 420, finish it every day. If you do not have enough stamina to ca left to cast a spell, you may turn to 227 to fight the creature with your weapon. Otherwise... Okay, well... Oh wait, zip is not zap. Nit, that that, that is true. Sud. So zap we know is a lightning spell, but I don't. You don't have an option for zap right now. No. Nope. While sud, I don't think you've done any of these before. Uh, sud, I guess. Three seventy, please, 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 please. Nope, not a spell. Uh, let's do wall, 447. Let's just keep guessing until... I haven't been keeping track of stamina points. That doesn't matter. We're almost done for the night anyway. Detect four stamina points. The manticore is in the opposite passage preparing to pounce at you. You cast your spell as it leaps and it roars loudly, loudly as it hits your invisible wall in mid-flight. Nice. Using your control, you fence it in security, al allowing you to grab this fin girl and run from the cave. Turn to 456. Wow, we put it in a box. Boom. 456. I mean, we, we didn't... I, I don't know if there's anything you get from killing it, but you know what? Oh, wow. Wait, yeah. is this it? No, there's a big... Oh, wow. That is it. Oh, we beat it. Wow. <laughs> Hold up. Okay, this is perfect. You leave the Manticore's chamber and follow the path to the source of light. As you had hoped, a cave entrance allows you out on onto the side of the hill. You and the Sfin girl find your way back to Torapani. The Sfin chief is overjoyed to have his daughter back, and the village erupts into celebration as their curse is now lifted. You are given the freedom of the village and decide to stay for the day to recuperate. You visit the Sfin healing priest, who will treat your wounds, cure any diseases, and lift curses which you have. Restore your skill, stamina, and luck to their initial values. The priest may also rid you of the annoying little mini mite if he is still with you. No. You sleep heavily that night and rise the next morning to continue your way. Before you go, the Sfin Chief meets you. He hands you two gifts, a pouch containing ten gold, Pog, uh, and a large key. I know, I know you head for care, says the Chief. But the, e the city is evil, and you must be on your guard. Two years ago, a traveler passed through here with, from Care and gave me this key, saying he would never return. This is a key to the city gate, and with it, you will be able to enter the city unnoticed. Once you get to Care's south gate, in the next adventure, Care, City Port of Traps, you may turn to 12 if you wish to use your key. Okay, so... Make a mark there, yeah. Care... So we've got two things to look up th at the very beginning of the... Yeah. You thank him and leave Torapani. You have made friends. Uh, you've made friends here and may permanently increase your initial luck score by one point. So we can actually go up to thirteen, I guess. So we have a, a luck of thirteen. Swank. Soon the path is leading you on from the Sh Shamantanti Hills down across the fields towards a great walled city, the City Port of Care, and on to the next stage of your quest. Wow, I can't believe that was the end. That's wow. wild. Wow, I mean, that, won. yeah, they the uh, they that kind of they kind of sped you through the end there. That's all it's kind of surprising. But I just thought that's weird that it was like a. I thought it was just like a little side quest. <laughs> oh wow! Hey everybody, we did it. So Yay. that's the end of dice, friends. Beach is out like a light. But before we go, just want to give one more shout out to our Patreon at patreoncom slash ready run. If you just uh, sign up there, you can give us a few bucks a month really does help us keep everything going. It lets Beach Nap, it lets me do book streams, it lets Paul do tech. It does everything. So thank you for your support. So that's it for us tonight. I'm going to wish you good night. Beach says good night. Paul? Good night. All right. Bye, everybody.